Hey, this is Infinity, and it is 11, 11 a.m., and it is 4.20 on uh, 2019, and so April 20th, 2019, it's a gorgeous day here in Crestline, California. I'm waiting for Karen to come on in, and we're going to talk about our healings. Ah, there Hi. she is. Hi, Lenny. Let me turn the radio off. I'm going to turn this up and be able to hear you. I'm sorry it took me so long, but guess what time it is? Uh, 2 11. And it's 11 11 here. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, very cool. Things always work out like that. I was like, what? It's like I sat down and I'm like, finally, I can do this. And it was 11.10. And I'm like, shut up. She's probably going to chime in at 11.11. And you did. <laughs> it was pretty funny. I could not have planned for that if I tried my hardest. <laughs> but you like how I'm like, let's do it earlier. And you're like, okay. <laughs> yeah. That never happens. I woke up really early today. I didn't sleep very much last night, which is typical of a full moon. And um, uh, and then it just got, and then it got past the time that I, and then it was like, I was thinking, okay, like 1045, I could, I'll be ready around that time. And here it is like, well, 11, 11. So um, yeah, my camera wouldn't work. And I was looking, I really wanted to be on my, I have a really nice HD camera that I would love to use for the YouTubes that I do, but it won't, it won't recognize it. Every time I try mm. to do a live with the, uh, with the, that camera, it, it, gives me problems. So I gave up on that months ago. I just had to let it go. It used to frustrate the living shit out of me. I used to stop I used to stop the lives and try to start again because the picture was is so much better with this camera that I have. And it's really tiny, but it's an HD camera and it works really well and and I just saw it. I had it over here because I was using it for what did I use it for? <laughs> I think it was something with you. But anyway, I couldn't find it. I looked everywhere for it. I couldn't find it, but it's still, I have nothing. I mean, not nothing. A lot of stuff is put away, but nothing is like really organized put away. It's just kind of where it's kind of going at this point because I moved. So that's just continuously frustrating. <laughs> And um, so anyway, so I had to restart, and then I was guided, and then I sat down, and I would, and then I saw the cards that I pulled from last night's live for the full moon, and immediately it was like, oh, you have to post, you know, you need to post, make a post on Instagram about this before it gets too late in the day, and I'm like, seriously, and it's like just do it, and I was like, oh. so I did that as fast as I could. It was just, you know, it's just kind of like that. But anyway, here we are. <laughs> Finally. Finally! On 420 of all days. How funny is that? 420, 11, 11 a.m. <laughs> it's just, it cracks me up how this stuff goes. So, I... Uh, Oh, and I want to say I'm sorry about yesterday and completely spacing. We were supposed to do this yesterday. <laughs> Oh, that's all right. <laughs> and I like at like three, three or three thirty p.m. my time. I was like, and I was talking with Dakota about something. I'm in the middle. Of, I'm like healing him because he was having a really hard time with his back yesterday, and or well, for the last couple of days actually. And but I only knew about it since yesterday morning. And all of a sudden, I was just like, "Oh, Karen." It. And he was like, what's wrong, what's wrong? And I was like, ah, I was supposed to meet with Karen to talk about her healing like three hours ago. And he's like, oh, no. And I was like, I go, and then my guides were like, you know, she's, she's aware of you at this point. <laughs> and I'm just like, all right, you know, she is going to understand that something happened because I don't usually just 
disappear, I'll usually say like yeah. such and such is happening. But I mean, it, every once in a while, I'll be swept up into something, and I will. I'll. I'll I'm so sometimes in the moment, <clears throat> I will just completely just forget stuff. It's like I need management, really. <laughs> I'm like a child. It's like, no, 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 come on, come on. It's just hard. It's just me, you know? So anyway, so I'm sorry about it. Oh, that's all right. But here we are. Um, were you able to, to do the meditation from last night yet or listen to it at all? I knew last you night after our healing? No. I was trying to, I was laying down, I was trying to, but I always fall asleep and I forget my, I've been forgetting my dreams lately. No, I mean, cause last night you, you said you were getting really sleepy and you left before, yeah, yeah before we did the meditation. Oh, be, oh no, before, no, I didn't do it. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. I was just curious. That's oh, uh-huh. No, I didn't do the meditation before. What do you mean? Oh, before oh, I did. I'm sorry. <laughs> you want to turn this light? It just feels really dark in here. Maybe that'll help. I have light right here. No, I was just curious You, if um, you had had a chance to do last night's meditation. That's all. It's no big deal. Oh, no. I was trying to tell that when you were on and, um, I was going to do the meditation and all, but then I had told you guys I was sleepy and I got real sleepy and then I was going to try to do it, but I always get tired and everything. I just don't, I can't concentrate. I've been, I've just been sleeping. But I'm doing the meditation. I'll try to do the meditation, but yeah, then yeah. I just get yeah, sleepy. Yeah. I just fall asleep and, I don't, and I'm just out of it. it just, I don't see anything. It's just black. So you're not remembering your dreams? Is that what you're saying? Right. And and that's like since when? Since um uh, oh, since I think the last time we had the the since before you were on, like I remember uh, the smell of the ocean and everything. I think that was it. After that, it was like little before then, and after that, I don't remember anything. I'll be trying to remember. I was, I know I have I have some dreams, but then. When I wake up, I'll say, I had a dream, but I, don't, I can't remember what it's about or anything. But do you, is that something that you can typically do, is you can typically remember your dreams? Yeah. You, you, yeah, yeah. I, I was able to remember them and get back in them, too. <laughs> well, I was able to, it, does, uh, it does happen every once in a while where we, where sometimes what we're doing in our astral state is so intense that on purpose we're not meant to remember because mm -hmm. if we did then we wouldn't get any rest at all oh okay you know I mean? does that make sense yeah that makes sense i mean that's like my existence most of the time i don't i just remember the <laughs> tiniest little slivers of my dreams that, that. yeah um and <laughs> Rosie, shush. Rosie. I even put a note on my door that I'm in session because people will just come by. They don't, yeah. even if, you know, they don't think unless you put it in their face. Like, mm -hmm. shh. Enough! Come here! Oh. Come here! Come here! You're being a good girl, but come here. I'm sure they read the note and they're gone. But she'll like if anybody gets even close to the house, she'll bark. You know, mm. they don't. Have, or if they're loud around the house, she'll bark. Yeah. Like that's just that's just what you're gonna do. But I doubt anybody is going to be like pounding on my door after they read the note. I just say, hi, I'm in session with the client. Please text. Um, okay. So, so yeah, so that's kind of how it is for me too. Um, 
the fact that I don't remember most of my dreams. Um, I want to, like, I'll come out and I'll be like, oh, like, I'll have feelings about stuff, or it may, like, I'll may remember little teeny tiny, like, one thing. Um, like, last night, for example, all I remember is, like, looking at a sign that says J-A-X. That's it. And I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> I don't know what that means. And I can't put anything with it either. You know, like nothing goes with it. I'm like, anything? Anything? Nope, nope, nope. So, so this used to really frustrate me um, because I really want to remember my dreams. I, I understand that it's important to remember your dreams. Yeah. And for a long time, I shut all that down because I was having night terrors and nightmares every single day. This was back in my like, uh, mid twenties to mid like third like I right, started right around there mid twenties mid twenties mm -hmm. I think or maybe yeah maybe a little bit later I can't really remember exactly when but it got so bad I went to the doctor. And I, I told my doctor that I was having these really bad dreams and they would feel very real and they would seem like I was just kind of awake. They were that normal and real and solid. And, but inevitably every single day they would just get twisted and things would go bad one way or another. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, I was just exhausted and I got no rest. And this is before my um, fibro diagnosis, um, before things got like bad. <laughs> and he was like, well, I don't know what to do. I can't give you a sleeping pill. And I'm like, no, I'm sleeping. I'm like, I just, I'm having these bad dreams. He's like, there's really nothing I can do about that. And I was like, awesome. <laughs> I was like, well, it'd be great if I just don't remember my dreams then, if I'm just like knocked out and I'm just like, and that's basically what happened. Like I realized at some point that I wasn't having any remembrances of my dreams. I wasn't waking up petrified and upset and angry because I would wake up. I would finally realize you're in a goddamn dream wake up, you know, and then I would wake up and then I would be all, you know, still, but my, all of my, everything is like, I was, it was really happening because it was extraordinarily real. So they're, that's why they're called night terrors. Let me shut this door. Put you in sawing or something. Uh, so I can't even tell you for like the better part of, I don't know, a decade or 15 years, I didn't remember anything. <laughs> no, that's a long time. Oh yeah. Because it was just like, just shut that shit down then, you know? And now, what is happening? Are you there? Oh, yeah, I'm here. Oh, that was weird. Uh, and then... And then after like my awakening and stuff and that started to happen and I started to understand, you know, about dreams, why that happened and all of that. And I tell people when you're having, if, if people have these problems, it's because once they get into astral, the lower dimensional entities are getting a hold of their consciousness and fucking with you. So they're feeding off of you in your sleep. They're keeping you busy and keeping you from getting higher in your astral state. And because you most likely are not fully awake, like I wasn't, I wasn't awake at all, you know, to know anything about anything, they could take full advantage of you. In so many ways, like 360 around your life, they could take advantage of you, you know, they can make you sick, they can make other people go against you, they can you know, make your family, you know, they can do all sorts of shit just to mess with you. And they can mess with you in your dream state too, which they did with me, you know. Yeah. And it makes sense why. <laughs> it makes sense as to why they did, or they came at me hard from like day one, you know. And yeah. back, I'm like, damn, <laughs> it just kind of blows my mind. 
Um, but at the same time, I'm like, yeah. And then at the same time, I'm like, well, it could have been a lot worse. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't dropped into a war zone, you know, um, it was, it was, it was different. But that was still a part of it. And so now it's been a few years and I do remember more, but I'm like, you know, at this point with all of my abilities and everything, you would think I would have no freaking problem with this. And my guides are just like, look, it's basically what I just told you. If you were to remember everything you did in your astral state while you're dreaming and sleeping and supposed to be resting, and it's especially hard during some some of these times where a lot of shit is happening energetically that people like you and like me are helping not just ourselves but people around us as well go through these energetic um, portals and periods. And it can be that we're extra super tired or we're super like wired or we're tired. That's what I've been for like 24 hours. I've been tired. I've been like, I'm tired, but I'm like, like I didn't even sleep that last three nights. Yeah. Four nights. That's how I've been. That's how I've been feeling. Been on and off. Sometimes I'll be real tired, and sometimes I'm wired like you. Yeah. Yeah. And it's because we're 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 not only doing our own thing energetically and whatever, but we truly are anchoring and helping out the collective in an energetic way when we're awake and when we're asleep we're working in that too so so it's and it makes sense it's like well yeah if i was fully aware all the time like in my dream state i would wake up and i would be so preoccupied with that part of my existence that i would not be able to do this part of my existence and and i'm like okay yeah that makes perfect sense because just sometimes the wild shit that goes on in this existence is preoccupying enough. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But the stuff that's going on on that side of the gate is like... So... <laughs> and I'm aware of it to that extent. Like, I know that for many of us, we are doing a lot of work in our astral state in higher dimensions with you know each other and our counterparts like the you know the, the rest of the angelics and the dragons and the fey and jesus and all the different you know members that we're attached to and we're teaching classes we're going to classes we're setting shit up for this part of our lives we're putting things in motion, we're traveling around, we're having conferences, we're teaching, you know, there's just so much stuff that's going on that yeah, we, we just really need to go into like a coma state in our sleep and maybe just kind of extrapolate a couple of things. So when we're in our sleep state, we can go, oh, I think that makes sense now, you know, if that does happen. So don't worry about it basically is what i'm getting around to just if you remember great don't let it go and just move on with your life because <laughs> mm -hmm. there's a lot to get to right right so um but when it comes to meditation that's a totally different thing if you're doing a meditation whether you're uh, staying awake the whole time and you can you can get into that quantum state and remember and feel and you know smell and all that stuff uh that's perfect if you fall asleep and don't remember that's fine but what i do want anybody to do is to go back and listen um like last night we um i channeled gaia and mm -hmm. And as you know, when you're in that state, you forget a lot of stuff. And so it's important to listen to it, just like when you're washing the dishes. That's what I do. I'll put my, I'll put the video on as much as I don't want to hear myself, and it's really kind of weird. <laughs> um, <laughs> once I'm in it and listening to it, it's fine. But like just to get there, sometimes I'm like, all right, you know. Um, but I'll, I'll just do it while I'm washing, washing the dishes or, you know, doing something like that. So 
you know, I'm not trying to meditate. I'm just remembering what happened. Um, and if that's all you can get to uh, consciously, then that's fine, you know. But I would definitely do it. Um, and there's going to be a live tomorrow for the okay. for Easter. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so in case you don't get to listen to it um, before that, I don't want you to. Because actually, Jesus announces it in his when I, when I'm channeling it, um, channeling him. Uh, and that had come like a possibility. I was like, oh, we're going to do a live on Easter. And it was just kind of like, maybe. And then when I was channeling him, he said he brought it up and announced it. I was like, yeah, there we go. <laughs> so anyway, so aside from the dreaming thing, <laughs> and that's been for said the ocean that was like new moon or something I think it was a new moon now I'm now I'm I can't remember when that was so it's been, at least, remember either. <laughs> it's been at least a few weeks yeah yeah uh I have a hard time with time <laughs> but it's been right around that uh but aside from that is there like anything else um, the only thing I notice is that I just think differently now because I used to be, um, my mindset is a little different. I'm more focused on what I need for me. Uh, That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> I, love <laughs> I, mean, I, I love that. Cause yeah, because I just, um, you know, back in the day, I would be a victim. I, I would victim myself to like, um uh, needy person is uh okay um um like um like on the medications uh, i need this medication because i have this issue but i don't i don't it, it, I, I don't blame i don't I'm not, I'm not a victim anymore uh it, it helps me to to be more um positive thinking on what i need for myself is all just a learning thing it's like um when you talk to me, like when I hear your voice, and then when you help me, it makes it helps me focus on just this. Like my mother used to always say back in the day too, when I was coming, when we were coming up, that we we're just spirits in a human body having an it's uh, on their spirits having a human, we're spirits having a human experience, and we're in these bodies. And right. years have passed, and then I was living my life and everything, and I have my son and everything. But being and then I was asking God to connect me with a real like I said before because I know it's a lot of bullshit people out there there's a lot of scammers and everything but I just and I'm kind of I know things you know um yeah. and I want to be connected with a real holistic person that's on my level that knows shit you know really knows shit that ain't influenced by churches and medicines and all that kind of shit you know right. and so I don't know how I got connected with you but I found you and you <laughs> listening to you and, and you healing me has helped me to not be a victim anymore. You know, to just like focus on 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 a real life shit. You know, shit that really happens for real. Like, okay, like I got this this can. I'm like, okay, I was diagnosed. I went to the doctor. That's how she finally met you, and I was diagnosed with breast cancer and all this. And then I was so weak and all this and that. And then I had a stroke, but that was all my fault <laughs> you know and, and and just healing and and you healing me and talking to you has helped me know that you know i'm I'm stronger than that i'm spared this is just my body that's going through all that shit. it ain't really me you know yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm stronger than that i'm i'm a spirit like when my mother used to say too and it makes and, and, and what you tell us reminds me of like stuff my mother used to say Absolutely. you know that's just my body going through this shit. <laughs> it's just my body is, is went through the cancer and went through the stroke. It's not me, you know. I'm, I'm in. It's not really the essence of me who I am. It's just my body was was. I was weak. I was being weak, like like I was. It's hard to explain. 
Like the es the essence of me is stronger than my body. My body was weak, but I was being weak like my body, you know. Yeah, because I mean, trust me, you're, you're preaching to the choir. Remember my remember yeah. my previous life too, you know, I was like incapacitated in bed, couldn't move because I was feeling everybody and as a physical empath and, and like you say, that was my fault and whatever makes you say that. And for me, it's more like, well, you could say, you know, we were just ignorant. We didn't know what we were doing with ourselves. Right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. And, and we did the best we could and we didn't know any better and then when when we started knowing better then we started doing better right right yeah that's another thing i can remember too like what you said also like before i was letting it bother me because i have um a, a nieces and a nephew you know they're uh, uh, adults now and some are young adults but when i was in my younger years uh, you know, I, I had a, I had relationships with them, but also I was all about me. I was in the military, you know, and, and now that, that um, you know, in 2000, I think it was 2001, I went back home in L.A., um, you know, and um, I tried to reconcile my relationship with them and everything was cool. But now, you know, it's just like they just really i don't really feel a connection with them with it, any of them like my niece is um mm -hmm. 28 years old now and one of my nieces is 40 years old and one of my nephews he's 33 now and i, I was always good to them and nice to them but i don't feel a connection and that's okay i was listening to you i mean i'm just gonna that's i mean i'm it's like when when you had said before that's just a past life i mean it's i wasn't mean to them or evil but it's just they they live their life and i live mine i mean it's kind of hard to explain like I, it's kind of, I, I, like I, when i'm I, on, like 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 on this, um, this um, zoom with you um sometimes it's hard for me to verbalize how i feel but you know how i feel i mean i'm just gonna just do me and that's not being selfish i'm not going to i used to always let that bother me about oh i'm gonna try to reach out and have a relationship with certain members of my family but oh well i mean they just just that they just damn i'm just gonna move on and do what i have to do it's too yeah, stressful. Yeah. we want to have a relationship with our family members it's understandable <laughs> Especially when we see other people having their relationships with mm -hmm. their family. It's not like I didn't try. I try, you know, but yeah, they just... I totally get it. And, and, the same, and the same goes for me. You have a lot more than I do, but I have a very... I have a... I mean, I have, like, my distant... Like, my, my mom's family in Columbia, my dad's family in New York, and, you know, distance plays a big role in things and you know physical distance and then just never especially when you never had any connection to begin with then it makes it really hard you know because mm -hmm. they both moved away and then they had you know then you know what i mean and so it it was like and when i say that i mean my mom moved away from columbia my dad moved away from new york and then they you know um settled in california and so they were very far away from both of sides of the family. And so I never had that. I just had my own immediate family. And that wasn't a, a, a that wasn't a, you know, day at the park every day. You know what I mean? Like my, my own home family, just the four of us was very difficult for me from a very, 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 very young age and never really changed ever. And I always felt the pull to try, try, you know, again and let it go. And, and there's so many breaks in time where, you know, there was full on times of divorce with my family and, or my mother specifically. And it would just kind of infest things. It was much more, hmm dysfunctional I think than what you're talking about but throughout it you know until it got it got to a point where I was just like you know no more just no more with this it doesn't matter who you are it doesn't matter what type of you know what title it is if it's 
mother, father, daughter, cousin, grandma, grandpa, like fill in the blanks with all the family member, you know, titles that it could possibly be. It doesn't matter what that title is. If they're not good for you in your life, if they don't add to your life source and your life force and lift you up and make you feel good. Um, and if they're constantly like either negative or unresponsive or only come around when they need something or complainers or use you against each other or whatever the other plethora of shit that it could possibly be with people, especially family, family can be ultra abusive than, you know, the normal people in your life. And those people can be messed up. So but we tend to, to give a, a longer leash to those people who are extra abusive to us. It's completely counterintuitive. And right. it's because we're, we're so indoctrinated into that, well, it's family, family is everything, family, family, family. And, yeah. and that's great. And that's true. And for some people that works out really well. And I, when I see that, it warms my heart, it makes me feel really good that that's working in whatever way that it's working. Hopefully, I don't know everything behind the scenes unless I, you know, tap in and I'm not doing that, for, you know, the, it's just when I, when I'm asked to. And, but when I see that, I'm, it warms my heart. I'm really happy about that. I don't have that like, oh, I wish that was me. And let's try to make that work. Or, oh, it's Mother's Day. It's Christmas. Yeah. I'm like, Fuck Mother's Day and Christmas. I'm gonna get all day all by myself and enjoy <laughs> life. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I don't, I don't get all weepy and bullshit just because it's some holiday and I should be with my family who continuously. That's, like, that's how that's how I feel now. After listening to you, yeah. that's how I feel now, and it, it's it's more or less stressful. <laughs> feel is you know after listening to you <laughs> when you said like when you said it before. So, it's less for me. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to deal with it no more. Cause like my sister, she, um, next year is her birthday. So she wants to celebrate at Disneyland because back, you know, back in the day, we was always going to Disneyland. Our parents always took us, but, uh, and I was talking to my brother, uh, I think it was last week or something that he doesn't, he doesn't want to go. And I don't have a desire to go really. I don't want to go, you know, it ought to be a chance for us to be with each other, but I don't really want to go. You know, because because if we're gonna if if everybody really truly was really into everybody, why we gotta wait till next year for her birthday? We, we should do it now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm not trying to be cynical or anything, but that's just how I feel. I don't want to want to go. I had no desire to go, really. And my sister still mm -hmm. has her. My, my sister still has her because she used to stay here with me. She still has her energy stuff here, and I don't really want it here either. I mean, she's a very toxic person very toxic. I don't want to talk about her behind her back, but the energy, I just don't want that energy. But after you had talked to us before, I just, it's more or less stress on me. I'm just going to do me and my life and what's around me and my life. You know what, that's, the only thing, life. that's the only thing that you can control is your focus and what you're doing in any particular instant in your life and right. how you feel about that. And what's coming into your consciousness is only what is what you can control. Um, and, and even to that extent, um, there are going to be outside situations that are going to yeah. come in. Yeah. Um, it's not true completely to say everything in our existence is, is what we manifest. It's yeah. we're part of a web of that. And right. you know, we're not living completely independently. We have we're connected to other things and people and events going on that, you know, in some way, shape, or form, we we, we have added our energy to absolutely, or else we wouldn't fucking be here. It's mm -hmm. that simple. But people twist it into everything is my fault and I'm doing everything that's going on in the world, and that's mm -hmm. absolutely ludicrous. It's crazy. It's like, no, you're in charge of what's going on between and here. And, and yeah, sure. The more focused and negative shit you are, the more that world is going to be your world. It's just kind of, that's how it, it kind of works out. So that's yeah. why it's like, you know, um, what is the set? What is that energy flow? Wait, focus. What is it? <laughs> An injury foe goes or focus, whatever. <laughs> <laughs>
It's true. I've had like 12 hours of sleep in five days. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, like attention goes where energy flows or something like that. And it's true. It's like, you know, what you're thinking about is really what's going to happen. And, and right. If, and and if you let the drama and bullshit and abuse and or neglect or or whatever of other people into your world, then yeah, that's on you. That's your responsibility, you know. Mm -hmm. So so you're in complete control of that. And people think like, well, I can't because they're my fill in the blank. Yeah. I can't not have a relationship with them, even though they drive me insane. They take away my energy. I don't get to do anything I want to do. They're constantly popping up in my life when, you know, it's the most inconvenient time. And that, 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 that. And you can, people just get, can go on and on. But because they're my mother or brother or son or whomever, you know, and that's just like... At some point, you're like, well, obviously, you like this situation, or else you would not, you know. At some point, I don't know, it just seems like a cop out, too. At some point, like, I'm gonna allow the drama of other people to dictate my life because I don't really want to do me. That's like the same people that create chaos, like we've yeah. talked about. It's the same thing, they just use, you know, it's using different people. So, okay, so that's awesome. That's awesome that you have, have come to that and that you feel good about it. There's no guilt. There's no shame. There's no ego involved in it. It's nothing. It, all it is is about you taking care of you. Yeah. Like, I used to feel bad back in the day. I felt bad. I used to feel bad. Yeah. <laughs> and guilty and all that yeah. well, don't need more I can't yeah that's good yeah. that's good because you sh you really shouldn't feel bad for taking care of yourself when really that you have a hundred percent of that burden unless you're incapacitated <laughs> you have a hundred percent of the burden of taking care of yourself and um so when people start you know that martyr thing um or, you know, well, I can't, like, you know, this happened, whatever. It's like, okay. <laughs> so that's what I'm all about. Like, I want people to be able to, to feel really good about, about being authentic, who they are, feeling into that, wanting to remember, not forcing anything, but but being proactive about wanting to to turn the, the page and start a you know start a whole new volume in your life, regardless of how old you are, regardless if you're 18 or 85, you know it doesn't it doesn't matter. If once it's like those the bells start going off and things start clicking that's the that's when it's supposed to happen right and that's when i want that's what i want people to understand you know and for anybody's circumstance it can always get exponentially better right and a lot of people resign themselves to well this is what it is right yeah. this is my circumstance either you know in how they're living or what their physical state is um because they were diagnosed with something that isn't curable or is really hard to get past or is chronic, you know, this sort of stuff. And it's like, well, that is what it is. And that's just not the case. Right. So, but it's hard for people to allow themselves to believe that because it so goes against what they've been told because once you tell a person you have a chronic illness and there's no cure for it you're going to always have to be on medication and a lot of the time you're going to feel like shit or you're going to have to blah 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 you're giving them a life sentence to that and they're fully signing up with it because they trust 
that entire process because they don't know any better. Yeah. And then when you go, no, 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 that's not actually the case. Um, you don't have to have whatever you have for the rest of your life. Right. Uh, and there's, there's some different cases. Like if somebody was born with down syndrome, you know, we can, we can definitely help, um, some of those things that may people may have problems with and those are different things. So we're not going to reshape anybody's physicality. Um, but some people deal with things that are way above and beyond what really be, would be happening just if they were like, un, if we could clean that out and get them back to like factory, you know what I mean? Like yeah. when they were and, and, um, but other than that, you know, there's so many things that are absolutely, it's, it, it's all just energy and it, it can all be transmuted and released and felt and, and I can feel it from, from a distance. I think a lot of people have, and I'd like to talk about that so if we can get into the actual healing. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Let's do that because I want people, this is what I like people to understand. At least you don't have to go into detail about if you had visualizations and what those look like because everybody's going to kind of see their own things um, when they're in that space with me, with me and what we're doing. But just real quick, I'm going to talk about what. Uh, what goes on and I'm going to roll it back to the first healing that that we did gosh I don't even know when was that I remember <laughs> I think it was like October or November I don't remember you probably <laughs> but um oh and were you able to listen to that again no, I didn't even listen to it again. I was trying to find it. Where is it at? <laughs> I emailed it to you. Oh, you oh oh you did? I thought I did. Oh, I mean, with the last I mean way back when I did. Oh, maybe you did, and I probably got rid of it accidentally, or maybe it's on was it on it, oh I don't know. You probably did. Okay, so I'm gonna I'll email it to you again. Okay. His, we really want you to listen to that again. Okay. And that's just, um, you know, laying in bed and just listening to it. You know what okay. I mean? Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Um, and that'll really, that'll really help you. But I know you remember it too, you know, because if yeah. you were conscious the whole time, every people don't fall asleep during a healing. Um, yeah, because it was a trip. I mean, because yeah, yeah. it was like, it like I believe in magic. And it was a trip. Like, uh, it was like you were way where you are. And I'm here, but I can feel you, <laughs> you know? I yeah, can feel yeah. the hands. Um, and I, <laughs> like energy is so true. It was like, I could just feel in my head and everything. It was like, I don't know. It just, it just my body just like shivered, like chills. I don't know, it's that, that energy. And then when you did it this last time, I could feel and you picked up on like like uh, on my left side the the digestion or whatever you was picking up but that, that i have been having a, a problem like that uh, lately and you picked yeah, up yeah. on all of that it was a trip you had picked and i didn't tell you that stuff and you picked no, up you on didn't. It. no we didn't talk about that you just said that you had eaten some chips and it, they made you tired that's all that yeah you know. yeah um, right but even before then you know it was problems going on that you had picked up you know yeah, yeah just, it was it just really like, it made me tired, but it was like before then, uh, there was stuff going on that I never even told you. And when you did that healing last, you picked that up. You picked up that there was a problem in my testes or lower left side or something, and there had been problems like that. I had been uh, there's too much information, but I'm gonna keep it real. I've been constipated. I'm usually not constipated, and I've been having problems there in that in this area around, you know. Yeah, and I, go, and I and that's and that's truly what it is to be a medical medium is to 
um, you know, if we want to slice and dice, you know, kind of the, the titles of what it, what it is that I do and the little different pieces when it comes to that in what I'm doing in that space with somebody, um, I am getting information on the person's physical and energetic body, regardless of what the person is, has told me or what they know of themselves. I will a lot of times uh, tell people things that like, just like you, they don't know that we didn't talk about. I never like, I don't need, I don't need a lot of information to, to do what I do because once we're connected energetically, I start seeing it. I'm getting visuals of it. I'm getting the feeling of it. I'm getting told stuff. I, I mean, it's just a whole, like we're in the room and there's like several of us and they're like, all right, so let's, so as we're scanning your body, it was like, oh, we get to your digestive system and it's like, ding, 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 ding. You know, it's like, oh, what do we got here? And then I have this visual of your intestines and there's like this blockage there and then I'm getting information yeah, and, and it has been lately too and it was a trip because when I was laying on my back like that and you were uh, healing me uh, and this uh, I was like saying to myself yeah this is like mad I said it the first time too when you had did that I said god this must be magic my body was feeling this energies it was feeling uh, it was feeling just weird stuff you know that i never felt before um so i know that was energies because like the way you was you described it and everything and i was like is this for real this is really happening it was a trip yeah yeah um, and that's just because you know we do connect energetically like once we get in that space just like when we're in astral um very you know we're doing the, the live astrals um yeah. but it's it's a lot more in like intense and and personal obviously yeah and, um we're working very specifically with all of your your chakras um well like i said before i'm going to go through really quick kind of the process of how this works so first we uh we just get nice and comfy and relaxed and i take i take you down into just this state of just being really like heavy but light at the same time and mm -hmm. your entire just getting you aware of your entire body um from head to toe and then i start and then i do a clearing of you of you and your space and your home and we bring that all the way out and go around gaia and back and fortify we do this whole like healing clearing thing just right from the start just we bring in the angelics and it's just like a, a full on clean energy to sweep. And so do you remember that? Yeah. And do you, how did that look or feel like to you when that was going on? Do you remember anything like visually or what it felt like? Did it feel like anything at that point? Um, like when you had, like when you had told me to relax and everything. Well, uh, we were doing like the clearing of, of like what I was like, of your, of you and your home and everything. Like, did that, what did that feel like? Uh, it was like you told me about this first time or this last time. Um, um either you know, time. Off, just any time. I don't know. It's weird. It just felt like, uh. It just felt like, uh, like I was by myself, uh, you know, like when you see like the only movie I could describe is like, cause I love that movie West Side Story. It's like the scene where the, the, the Maria and that guy meet and they at that dance party, but it's just them two. That's how it felt when you said that it was like everything was around, wasn't around anymore. It's like, I was just there, you know? Ah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> no, yeah, absolutely. So it was like everything fell away. Yeah, it was, yeah, exactly. It's like everything else just fell away. It's like it was just me there in that space, like chilling. Perfect. That's a that's a really, really great um description of that. And 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 what you're describing is where your uh 
you're in that out of body quantum state and I'm meeting you on an energetic level. So we're yeah, that's what it felt like, that's what it felt like. It was just you and me. That's what I could feel your, your energy. It's like you were there. It was like you were there. It's yeah. like, I'm not way in California, but it's like you were there. Yeah. It was a trip, you know? Yeah. And when we're in that, when we're in that space, that, that pocket, that dimension quantumly energetically, um, then that's when we can connect and really feel into your, into your chakras. Yeah. Because after that, after that whole, like, kind of like everything falls away, we do this whole clearing thing and it just kind of sweeps everything out. And, um, and then we come back into just you yeah. And your chakras, then we start with your root chakra, and we go all the way up. And uh, during that entire process, we're dropping your energy in, into and connecting with Gaia. And once that happens, then she comes in and speaks to you. And that happens for every single one of, of the chakras. She has something to say. And and that's like the longest process. Yeah, it um, seemed like it was people around me. Like I know you were there, but it seemed like it was other, other inner, like other things around me. Like, yeah, like I was so, laying down, like in, yeah. like, like you're at a hospital on operating the table. It's like I'm laying down, but it's like it's people around me just well, looking. At me those are those. That's the that's your spirit tribe. Those are the angelics that work with me. Mostly, it's yeah. That's what it felt like. <laughs> it's your immediate guardian angels that are always with you. And, um, like Archangel Raphael, um, he's like always present in my healings, just like Gaia is always present in my healings. And Jesus is always present in my healings, whether or not he chimes in and speaks, which usually he doesn't. <laughs> um, but he's always just there, there. He's just always subtly there. We just know that. <laughs> um, and uh, like you don't need to hear from him. You just know he's there, right? So, um, but, uh, but yeah, at, at different points within the healing. Um, so when we get to like the clearing stage, after we go to the thing with Gaia, like, well, let me say this. We're doing initial clearing of your space and we're making it so it's just you you know we're just getting connected mm -hmm. um after, once we're in that space then your guard your your guardian angels and that they all come in and then we do that like we do that scan um just to clean sweep you and uh and then we connect with Gaia and once once we go from one to the other so they kind of step back a bit and then we do the thing with Gaia and then when we go into like the deep cleaning part <laughs> where we're gonna um go into very specific points if there are any and then there's just like, tell me what I need to know. What do we need to heal right now, basically? And then they tell me. And that's what you're talking about. Because then they come in and they go, she's been having trouble with her large intestine. She has a blockage. She's been constipated. Um, and, you know, they're giving me this information. And then I'm telling you what's going on with that. And, and then... Um, that's like what happened this last time. And as well as like, you know, let's have a really light, easy diet for a couple days and you know, to this extent to like really help help you is along with us doing the energy work because then we do the infinite love light energy infusion and that's when we're really blasting you with like the highest frequency vibration that you could possibly get um and what we do with that is we go directly into the physical heart because that pumps the blood and the oxygen all goes through the body that way and that's just the way i was guided to do it instead of into a chakra it just into your physical body heart and then it just permeates out through there and so um 
so yeah so and that is like you I know that afterwards you were like yeah that's trippy because you didn't like you knew that I had this thing with my stomach and I was just like yeah like I it was a question it, I didn't ask you 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 know I was like you have a thing with your stomach yeah and I did uh, and yeah, I didn't tell you and I, I've been having it for uh, you've been having it for a little while yeah it yeah, was yeah. Yeah, and they showed me that, and I was like, oh, that sucks, man. Um, that's, like, the worst. And so uh, so was it um, – so how was it after the healing in that regard? How, were, how did you feel, you know, with your – with all that? Like, when did you feel better or whatever? Uh, I the next day I felt a little tired afterwards, but right. – I just started drinking better. I mean, I ran out of the crystal. I used to buy crystal glasses way back in the day. Uh, I just ran out of it just today. So I'm just drinking regular water, but I'm praying over it for, you know, for God to put in another existence. But I've been, um, I have Hillary meat now, meatless meat. <laughs> so I've been eating the meat. Yeah. And I feel lighter. I don't feel as heavy like yeah. I was feeling i feel lighter that's what everybody says when they do when they stop eating meat is that they feel lighter and that's yeah. energetically you will feel lighter energetically because mm -hmm. meat is very heavy yeah see it tastes good but it's, it's it is this heavy i do feel lighter <laughs> since it's i left it alone since i'm not eating it yeah it's because the energy associated with the animal that was killed basically murdered you're eating murdered meat and that's really, really heavy energy. Just imagine, you know what I mean? So yeah. when we're consuming that, it's super hard on us energetically, not only physically to digest it. And our bodies are just not meant to digest meat. This is why people have all sorts of digestive problems and cancers and stuff because the meat gets stuck in the large intestine and literally mm -hmm. starts rotting and causing all sorts of problems. And this is why most people should do cleanses and detoxes and um, what are those things called where they basically blow out your asshole with water and cough. You know what I mean? Like, like an enema. Enemas and what's colonoscopies no. and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's a uh, what's it called? They basically put a tube up your butt with water and like clean out like that whole you know as far as that like, sounds like an enema. No, no, no. It's a deep. Oh, is it a colonoscopy? No, no, no. It's 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 like a a colonic. I think is what it's. Oh, called. okay. Like you can go to like, like just like you go to a salon, you can go. I don't even do. I don't even do that. So I'm just gonna do right and eat right and try to re and and remember the stuff that. I've, you no, I've never done it. I've never done it either. But people who, eat, people who eat meat, you know, it's not a bad idea because it does get stuck up in there, and um, we're just not. We as human beings are just not designed to eat meat. We're just. We we. Have, it's always been there so and it keeps us sick so they keep giving it to us and it's bad for the environment and it's, it's just bad in so many ways so that's why it's done basically <laughs> so now we have this fake meat stuff that's pretty good isn't it do yeah you know? some of it tastes yeah so a lot of it tastes good i did research because yeah. i just want to some, some of it um, a lot of stuff says vegan, but it's really not vegan. So when I look at the ingredients, it has a whole bunch of bullshit in it. But the only one that I've seen look was cool was that tempeh, that light life stuff, and um, that Hillary stuff so far. And that field rolls, I haven't tried that one yet. That field roll seems all right. That mm -hmm. grain meat stuff. I mean, it's not real meat, but it's just made out of grains, vegetables, and stuff. Hmm. I, I just I just know if I honestly don't know a ton of them. I know Beyond Meat and Gardine Gardine or Gardini or whatever it's called. Gardine. I, yeah, I looked at Beyond Meat. I tried Beyond Burger before. It was pretty good, but it's still expensive. Then yeah, I'll put yeah. that Gardine. Um, because it got soy in it and like and I remember what you said about soy, but uh, I don't know about soy. It got certain things in it that I'm probably not going to eat. A lot of vegan stuff is made with soy. 
it's yeah. just you don't you just wouldn't want to eat a ton of it every single day but right you do that with anything you know what i mean right that's true and here and there that's you know that's it's fine i i eat all that stuff um you know it's processed but every once in a while you know a, a fake chicken nugget sounds really good with some barbecue. It sure does. <laughs> it sure does. I'm thinking about buying some of that, some of that fake chicken they're, nuggets. They're so good. And then there's the the Boca burgers with the with the fake like um like the chick like a chicken fillet kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It tastes exactly like like a chicken fillet. And you can and you can make or the um, fake uh, the fake breakfast sausage or the fake yeah. or the fake ground beef that's like you know Mexican ground beef flavored stuff mm -hmm. that you, can, you can put in a burrito or a taco or you know um, there's a bunch of stuff that and I've I've made and prepared and fed that stuff to meat eaters and they had no idea they weren't eating meat. They were like, and then afterwards I'm like, you know that wasn't meat. They're like, no way. I'm like, mm -hmm. they're like, wow, that's impressive. Like, I thought it was meat. And I was like, yeah, they're doing it that well now. They, mm -hmm. they, I mean, it may like be a little different, but it's not like, oh, this isn't meat. Like nobody has ever right. thought that like the, the meatballs in the spaghetti or the chicken the grilled chicken pieces in the salad or that you know when i've done stuff i'm like well i had meat you know like i'm like because i just want to know what they have what they think you know without mm -hmm. having any preconceived notion that that wasn't meat you know then right afterwards i'm like that wasn't meat they're like whoa <laughs> because when the fake shit came out 20 30 years ago it was horrible it was awful it was so bad. Did you ever try any of that stuff from like mm -hmm. way back when? Oh my god! I think Marty Star Farms, I, I maybe about twenty years ago, or something. A twenty something like when Marty Star Farms first came out, I had Marty Star Farms back in the yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, I get those. I get those. Um, the sausage patties for the Morning Star. I love those. They make them really good now. But like, there's some stuff that was like all made out of soy, out of tofu, and it all tasted like yeah. It just tastes <laughs> like crap. It was nasty back in the day. I heard them trying to prove. And now it's like you can't even tell the difference. It's really good. It's because, and they're making so there is soy, but there is plant protein, um, right? Um, stuff too. And then there's just like vegan prepared meals that you can buy. Yeah. I mean, the way that I, I mean, I wouldn't be like, I want that every single day, but every once in a while, like, I'm like, oh, I get these burritos, I get these vegan burritos, and it's like, you know. Every once in a while, I want a meal I didn't cook from start to finish. I just want to put it on the pan and just have it done, you know, or a vegan pizza or something that is prepared, but, um, you know, it's just, I cook most of my, my food, you know, and every once in a while, it's nice not to do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. <laughs> to be lazy and be like, I'm hungry. I <laughs> like cooking. <laughs> okay. I don't want dishes, but I don't want to take 45 minutes to forget. Right. I'll just have a bowl of cereal. F it. <laughs> I have bowls of cereal for dinner all the time. Look at Affinity. Look at Affinity. It's Roxy. It's Roxy. Roxy. Say hi to Affinity. I just woke up. Mm. Hi. Say hi, Mama. Oh, she's adorable. <laughs> she looks, yeah, she looks like mommy. She looks like mommy kitty. <laughs> yeah, we always call that's her. That's her um, nickname too. Is mommy? We call Roxy mommy. We say hi, mommy. Hi, mama. Okay, so um, where were we? Uh, oh, we were talking about the digestive stuff. So and the food, and that's how we got off on all that. Okay, so let's go back on track. So now with your okay, back to your healing. Um. Well, I want to skip back to your previous healing because in your previous healing, it was mostly about, um, it was like an overall healing, um, total body healing, um, clearing and healing, but it was also to go in and kind of get rid of any residual negative energy around the breast thing, um, stroke thing, and just give you a good clean, 
clean sweep there. And I've been interested to find out how any of that felt for you, if you can remember um, when we did that. Um, I don't know. It's kind of hard to remember. Uh, I just know it. <laughs> I mean, if nothing, if nothing stands out, that's okay too. Yeah, nothing really stands out. It's just like. Well, do you, no. let, me ask, let me ask you this. Um, did, because we just did the second one like a week ago? Yeah, I think it was a week ago. I was going to say about a week ago. Yeah, it was a week ago. And the reason why we did a second one is because after the first one, um, like directly after the first one, I was getting information that we needed to really fortify your shield and, and to really, uh, it was like, like I, like I explained before we do this whole like clearing thing of negative energy and then we get into the business. Then we would do the infinite love light energy infusion. That's where we're, we're basically infusing your entire everything in your physical body and your energetic body with, with the vibration of love, which is ultimately healing. Mm -hmm. The clean sweep through your entire body, through your heart of infinite love light energy. And I always visualize that as this like bright white with a purpley hue light as it's just exploding through the body. Um, and then it was basically, that's the end of it. Um, and during that process, the angelics come in and there we're all kind of, <laughs> I'm holding a chocolate raisin. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love chocolate raisins. Yeah, I thought, it, yeah, it's kind of been my diet the last, like, I haven't barely been able to eat, so. Um, but then, like, after that, it was basically, that's the end of the healing um, with, like, a, a simple shielding or whatever, but nothing major. And... Because we're like basically creating a dome around your, the structure of your home in the beginning of the year. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, because I was imagining that, like when you had did that, I was imagining, because um, I live in an apartment building, but I was imagining this whole apartment building had that dome around it. Yeah. And it's that same, like, shimmery, purpley, white light. Yeah. yeah. You saw it too? Yeah. Yeah, and it's this just like very transparent. You can walk through it and everything, but it's like you can tell it's super strong, like holding a lot of light around yeah. like around you. Yeah, so that's what I was doing at the beginning of the feelings with everybody up to you, and right after that it was like we need to go in on the back end after we do all this clearing and shield her like again. And I was like, oh, wow. Because, and then it was basically like, like you're getting really good at what you're doing and we're getting attention. And so they're, and so the dark energies are like really coming in. And I've, I did experience that with other, with other people um, having a hard time afterwards and not really, but it wasn't like afterwards I was given that information to go back. It was more like I would tell people, like, you really have to understand that even though we're getting rid of a lot of this stuff, there, you know, until you really go through feeling your body without the attachments and fortify that within yourself, um, there may be some residual like knocking at the door like hey you there hey you there hey you there like kind of thing because they don't want to leave you they've been around for a really really long time you know and uh so for whatever reason it's taken however long it's taken between the first healing and now and that's not to say that like 
there was anything that like bad happened because of it. It was just, you know, um, how, how do I put it? Like, I guess you just think like a little weak, <laughs> like a little weak that needed to be fortified, you know, like one of those things. And, um, and so anyway, we finally got around to doing it a week ago. And mm -hmm. so this time we didn't do the thing. We didn't do all the chakra stuff one by one. We did go and we kind of activated them all at the same time. Cause you know, we've been there, done that. And right. I didn't find any indication that you had anything, anything problems going on with that whatsoever like you're really connected you're you're you know it was just kind of more like supercharging what we've already done and her just kind of pulling that you know grabbing all of those energy centers for you and then and sending that back so you remember that and how that well, well that explains that why um okay when i had when you did the last healing this last time that explains why from head to toe i felt all that that energies and all those yeah, feelings yeah. Oh, generally yeah, yeah. generally because yeah, it, it, it was weird from my head all the way to the bottom of my feet to my toe i just it just was i felt weird shiver i mean not weird but weird in a really good way that was all that energy yeah you were active yeah we activated all of your chakras That's why like I in, felt the in the first in the first healing we do like one and we drop it down and then oh and, okay. and then you know like each one takes at least like 10 minutes and or about that i think i don't even know I don't even know. Maybe five. I don't know. Um, it feels no, maybe not ten. That's not right. Mm -hmm. Maybe five minutes. Each one takes about five minutes. And we go to eat, we go from the root all the way to the crown chakra. And at, as each one activates, it's just sending out this major pulse of energy and connecting. So by the end of it, yeah, your whole body is just well, what we aim to do when we're um, doing the healing is to get the get all the chakras turned on and get them in alignment so they're working together and the flow of energy through all of your energy system is unimpeded and and just on the same beat, you know, kind of thing is what we're going for. And when you're feeling that and that's all like activated, same thing as when we're in the astrals. Like, do you feel that when we're in the astrals? Do you get super tingly? Yeah, it feels weird. <laughs> yeah. And different. I know when people, they always are amazed by that, um, that they feel stuff. Um, like, like every single person that I've ever done a healing with afterwards is like, holy shit, I really felt X, Y, Z, and this, 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 yeah. and everybody yeah. is a little oh, different. But <laughs> yeah, because I really feel those energies and all that, because um, uh, like to tell you the truth, um, a lot, I believe in meditation and all that, and I believe in magic, but I was feeling kind of, you know, cynical and a while, you know, so is that for real? But yeah, Lee, it's a trip. I really feel that. It feels, you can feel that, that energy is like a charge. It's like, it's hard to explain, um, but it just feels different. I don't really feel it all the time. Just when you did the healing, I felt it. When I go through the, when we have our meditations with you and all that, right. it's like, uh, I really feel it when I have, when you, when you help us, when we have that guided meditation, I can smell, you know, I don't really, when I have to do it myself, I don't I have the sensation of smelling, but like when we have the guided um, astros with you, the meditations, I could, I could smell stuff. Like when we had that last one, I could smell the ocean. I remember what it smelled like, because I used to walk on the boardwalk, and you know, like, like, the, like, I, like I told you, I lived in, in California, yeah. we were to the ocean, I could just smell that smell, you know? Yeah. And that, and that's, I was just like, wow, that's awesome. Because I also remember when you first started with, with my group and doing the astrals, you're like, I really don't see much. I'm not yeah, getting, you know, cause yeah. I'm always, you know, you're like, I'm not feeling and like, you're like, I feel stuff and I feel like I'm doing, you know, like, like you knew that there were like, Oh, a lot of the time in the beginning you would fall asleep too. 
you would be yeah, like, oh, you, would wake up, you would wake up just like when, when we're coming out of it. And that also yeah, trip exactly. out. That, that would also trip people out. Would be like, I'm waking up right when they're bringing this out, and it's like, yeah, well, it's not wake up. it was over. Y'all would be knocked out or fall asleep, and just when it was over, I'd be waking up, and you guys are finished it. I was like finishing the ash. I was like, it was right a on. lot of people, a lot of people. There was definitely there was uh, there was when when it was the bigger group when we were doing it every day. This was like back in September and October, and there was a big group of people that were like there pretty much every day yeah. um, there is the definite like the set of people who almost always fell asleep and then there was a set of people who never fell asleep and the people who always fell asleep almost always woke up when we were coming out of it too mm -hmm. um, That's just and it's because you're not really sleeping you're just going into it's like the same yeah, thing i remember you said that everybody yeah, said it's it's not really like, like, magic. i'll wake up just in time i was like Perfect time, and I'd be knocked out and fall. I'd be able to hear the ash. I want to start here. I go fall asleep and just wake up. Just when I wake up, you guys are finished. And I was like, and then you explained, and I was like, oh, okay, that's why. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it's it's. Not, I mean, you're so your body goes into such a trance state, and when you're going quantum, that you just you're so you're. It's almost like you're so deep in it that you you lose any perspective of what where your physical body is yeah. like like you're very sure. similar to dreaming but you're not asleep at the time you know mm. and um and you're are conscious but you're yeah, in, because sometimes i i'm not gonna cut you off on top but yeah so sometimes i can still hear your voice i mean not fell asleep yeah. but like the I get it sometimes. I was like, yeah, I was like a trip that experience. Yeah, and it, and it also the people who would fall asleep when we would talk about after they would wake up and we would talk mm -hmm. about what happened. Then, then you guys would go, oh, I remember that. And then it's like, well, yeah. we're actually yeah. asleep. You were there with us. We we're right. all there. It's just your experience of how it feels to you feels like you're you're asleep. Um, mm -hmm. but you're just really going deep you know and, yeah. and like and that's great um because it's we are like when i tell people it's like we really are going quantum we go i'm a quantum it's like, explorer, right. and, it's like going to a music park like going to disneyland and like getting on that ride. i forgot that ride that was that was at disneyland it's like going to a music party and getting on a ride. It's like, it's something to look forward to. Yeah, it. it's like, it, it really is like um, that like virtual reality. It's like- Yeah, like, that's what it seems like. It's yeah, and we're it's all so having good. the same experience, you know, because yeah. I'm seeing the same things and I'm like projecting it out. This is kind of how that they explained it to me because I'm like, how does this even work right now? Because I didn't go to school to learn how to be an astral guide and to take people quantum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, met I, a woman just, I, I just did yeah. what I was told to do and the nature of of that and I guess um being so tapped in energetically as a as a physical empath and really yeah. what I am makes yeah. it so I can I can attached to you know with people i i visualize it like when we start going into astral or you know especially when let's jump and go let's talk about astral when we start going into astral and there may be 10 people there i visualize everybody in their homes and then when we start going astral it's almost like i'm energetically holding everybody's hand yeah, I have yeah. 10 different arms and 10 different hands and I'm holding everybody's hand as we're going through the ride, as you put it, or we're sitting there and I'm channeling. I still feel like, like I'm here physically, but at the same time, I'm hearing what's coming into me and I'm talking, you know, it's coming through my voice, like as my voice, as Jesus or Gaia. Right. Um, and then at the same time, I can feel the people that are that are there mm -hmm. at the same time, like as I'm connected with them. And so can the so can the divine counterparts that are there because they'll respond to questions that people are thinking in their quantum in that quantum state. That happens all the time. 
like it's just, more natural uh, going just, to the like, garden. Your questions and stuff, yeah, and we're just like natural. in this space energetically. Like, we really yeah. take our conscious, like you said, we're just in our physical body, but that's not what and what we are. We're right. not, you know, we're like a ball of light that is in this body that's all plugged yeah. in in a right. million different ways through our nervous system and our phys and our blood in our veins and all that right. stuff and we're alive in it but when it dies we leave it right. <laughs> and we're just energy and we and we go into that quantum state that we're constantly in all the time yeah. You have to remember that unless we're unless we're told to look at our bodies when we're in astral, we're not physical. You have to, you know what I'm talking about? Like when yeah. you're in that quantum state, are you feeling like you're in your body? No, it feels no. like a dream because it just it just seems like you're just on the outside looking in. That's what it seems like. It's just like you're yeah. in a different world. It's like um yeah. Because everything feels heavy when you're in the body and in the world, but then when you go into the actual projection, it things feels lighter. You know? It doesn't feel as heavy. Like, yeah, because like, you're not in your body. Your consciousness right. is projected at. That's why it's called astral astral yeah, meditation, like astral quantum meditation. It's it's you're projecting out your consciousness into another space mm -hmm. and time. That's that just is that that exists in its own way energetically. It's being created for us as we're in it. We're creating it. It's being created. It's being mm -hmm. it's being projected from the divine beings that are giving us the the energy to make it a, a thing in where we're at together. Whether it's just you and me, or it's you and me and ten other people. Mm -hmm. And each one of us are having our own individual experience, but we all know that we're we're all there together, and we're having a very, very much connected experience at the same time. Um, and we're also affecting energies, like when we would do the the astrals to heal Gaia and to take on the different um, storms and and hurricanes and stuff. We're really in those spaces, really moving energy around and really working, like what's really happening. Um, it's just on an energetic level. And yeah, those were amazing. I was it is. It's, it's because great. I was like imagining moving waves and clouds and everything. It was a trip, you know. I, know. I was really imagining this, really seeing myself <laughs> moving stuff. It was, it was a trip. I know. Uh, it's pretty awesome. I miss it, honestly. <laughs> I keep asking, like, there's a hurricane coming. Are we going to do anything about that? No. I'm like, all right. <laughs> like, I always want to. I do. Because, you know, that's just my nature. But um, not for now, anyway. So, and I know that's that's kind of a that's kind of a mind blowing thing to take in to really kind of accept for a lot of people that that's something that can actually be a thing. Um, but first you have to understand that everything is energy and we, if we're, if, if we, and we're, energy our consciousness is energy our soul is energy we can move energy and manipulate energy and that's what people call magic <laughs> um which is fine it, 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 you know there's a lot of things that can be called magic but you know or magical but it really is it doesn't take any special training to do it, to perform this stuff other than the knowledge that it's a possibility. And then when you start to, to, to get into that, to acknowledge like, holy shit, I really feel stuff. Like I've healed people who were nowhere into the, just, we just connected in a way that brought us together. Like Sean, for example, you listen to his, um, healing 
yeah. in audio healing. He's the only person yeah. who hasn't done a video one, but but he did a he did an audio heal. Um, yeah, yeah, I listened to his. Yes, I think it was yesterday. I listened to his. I think yeah, and that was he's the one who had the hernia surgery, and yeah. um, Bio came in and he talked about. He was just really blown away how things mm. went numb how he didn't feel the pain anymore. And he, like a dumb dumb, went and did all this laundry before his healing. And I'm like, well, you know, I'll make you feel better, but why'd you do that, you know? But he's like, yeah. Um, but he had never been into anything other than being open that I could help him and really believing that that was a thing. But mm -hmm. before me, he hadn't heard of any of that stuff. He wasn't into, he didn't know about Reiki or energy healing. He, you know, was just kind of like, I do believe that there's, you know, um, a lot more. And he's a scientist. He, um, he is a, is he a scientist. I'm trying to remember what his profession was, but, and he, he really didn't expect to feel anything like he said. You know, like he said in his inner, in his post healing interview, like I really didn't expect to feel anything, mm -hmm. let alone what I felt. And, and he goes, just like you, I felt like you were right there. I felt like the energy, mm -hmm. I felt it tingling. I felt it shooting up like back from Gaia. I felt her holding me. He was just blown away what he saw, oh, what he felt, oh. where he went. He was just like, I didn't even know that that was even possible. Like he was just... It was really awesome to hear his experience because yeah, it was. Um, that's how I felt. It was like I was blown away because I've heard of things before. I've heard of that what you Reiki and all that Reiki, Reiki and all this stuff, but I've never actually had none of it done. Actually, none of it. And I was like blown away. Like him was like I felt those it's like you guys were there. You know, now now you're way in California, but it seemed like you were there. I yeah, could feel and you that's guys. The thing energy. too is that. Um, is that I try to tell people like I don't need to be with you. I really don't. Because <laughs> no, you way California, I'm way way over here. And yeah, just, like, it's really not. There. It's, it's really like I don't have to have you in, in my house, in my on my table. Um, right. you can be at home in bed, and that's just how much more convenient can that be? You know. That's Real convenient. It's just, it helped it, me a lot. Just from way in California, you helped you help. I me. know. It's like, and people even in the in in this area, I'm like, no, seriously, you just stay home because after a healing, you really want to get your car. Oh, I mean, it sounds horrible to me. Like, it's just you just want to be at home for like. I tell people like, hunker down for like a day, or at least have the option to not have to even go to the store. Like, you just want to whatever like melt into your home you know if that's what you feel like doing the last thing you want to do is get up and and drive or whatever um and it is just as effective it doesn't matter i'm 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 someone who's psychically connected so that's energy i don't it's not a physical thing yeah i can put my hands on somebody physically yeah and find the hot spot and that seems to really get get people off is when i tell them that then they're like whoa you can do what and i'm like yeah like i can feel energy to that extent I can, I can feel it in my body what other people feel in their body right. just like they're feeling it right and slash i can put my hands on a animal body or a baby body uh, yeah see when you had uh when you was healing you did a healing on one of the it was a it was a dog uh it was one of the dogs that i can't think of the breed i think i don't know if it was a was it a german shepherd it was a dog you did a healing on a dog it was a dog that you did a healing on it yeah was that, a, that was my son's dog oliver oh, okay with yeah, the yeah with the ear yeah with the ear mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, he, it, he had an energetic it, attachment it. that was right destroying his ear. Right, and um, I know I've seen I've seen that heal, and it was just amazing how you're so connected with Guy and and all the use you as the vessel. They just you're so connected with them. It's like oh, it's, I wish I had a connection like that. I mean, I could talk, I talk to spirits, and when I when you showed us the clouds, like I look at the clouds, and now I can. 
I, I, I find myself looking at clouds more. It, it, like I looked at them when I was a kid growing up and I was imagining to see shapes and figures. But since talking to you and being connected with you, I see them in a different, like like the way you had seen, see them. Like I could see like the dragon <laughs> and, 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 and Jesus with the lions and I could see that now. You know, I'm, I'm looking at the clouds more and more now since you, since I got connected with you. Did you, watch, at, did you watch my IGTV of the sky the other day? No, I didn't look at it. I got to get to see here lately. I haven't been. I got to get Instagram. So I don't really <laughs> use my. Well, no, I think you can. Well, you can get that on. You can get that on. On your computer, just like you get. Yeah, OK, I'll, I'll, I'll get on the computer then. I'll, I'll look. I'll, 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 Wait, I'll, let me. Whoa. So I got Instagram. Sure. I, can look at it. I can do it from the computer. I can look at your IG channel. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Um, let me hold on. Because I like looking at them. I'm, I like that. I got to get Instagram because I like looking at your pictures. Yeah. You, if, and all that. I, I love that. Yeah, if you go to my Instagram.com slash infinite love eight energy, you sent an email. Huh? Or, or to my phone, you did? Because I turned my phone off. No, 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 okay. no, 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 no. This is just the website. Oh, okay. Here, I'll... Hold on. I'll, I'll put it in the chat. Um... What should I do with the chat? Okay, I see it. Uh, what do I... I what, um, how do I access that? Um, like, after, the, after we have the Zoom, do I get on the chat, or what do I do? No, can you see it right now? Yeah, I see it. Yeah, I see it. It's on there, let me see. Put okay, so click, click on that. Um, yeah, I see it. Okay, click on it. It should open up your web browser. Mm, okay, yeah, I've opened it up. And then just bookmark that or, you know, save that in your, save, okay. save that, um, Oh, okay. I see it. Yeah, I got it. I'll, okay, just bookmark it then? Yeah, bookmark it in your, like, Chrome or whatever. Okay. And then that way you can just go to it, you know, whenever you feel like. Um, I usually post every day. Some days I don't. Some days I post more than once or twice or four times. I'm, it just kind of depends on what's going on in my life. Um, okay. But if you go, if you open up that web, that web page, and first you'll see the posts. Mm -hmm. And then right next to that, it says IGTV. Oh, uh, okay. The post. Okay, I got it on here. IGTV. Oh, the, say it again. I'm sorry. Okay, so up at the top, it says um, Infinite Love 8 Energy. Yeah. And then it has the little circles for the highlights. Those are highlights. Yeah. So the little circles. You could click on those and watch those. Right, yeah. be right below that, it yeah. says post IGTV saved and tagged. Or it says post and IGTV. At least it should. Post IGTV? What the? Okay. Let me see. Okay. I love. Okay. I'm at IGTV. I mean, excuse me. Uh, Infinite Love 8 Energy. Right here. Right here. Yeah, let me give you this. Let me give you let this. Give you let this. Let me give you this. Um, go back into the chat into Zoom, and I'm going to give you this instead, because this will take you directly there. OK. Click on that one instead. It just says channel. It's just the number with, I mean, it's just infinite love, eight energy slash channel. Okay. And that'll take you directly, hopefully, to, yeah, that takes you directly to, to the IGTV page. Okay. Let's see, it's coming up now. Takes me directly to the IGTV page. Must have went on the same one again, but I put the one that said channel. <laughs> I'm tripping. What? No, I'm just talking to myself. I'm tripping. I went to the. I went to that. Uh, but it's, it's showing me the same thing. I must have went to it again. Let me see. I'll go back. 
Okay, I went to the one that says channel. Yeah, go to that one. Yeah, okay. So you'll see, these are videos. So one says, so what, is, what do you see on that page? I see love, love, excuse me, infinite love, eight energy, and then it follows next to it, then it gets um, posts and followers and following, then it has your name and the aisle, and that's all it has on there. And it has um, to the left, the picture of the heart, but scroll, you have to scroll down. Oh, I'm sorry. I am scroll. Okay, I'm scrolling down. Um, scroll all the way down. Well, I mean, there should just be. I see posts. Okay, the posts. I see the word post. Do you see the word IGTV? No, it's just post, and it has tagness to it. It just has posts, and now uh, then it has tags. Let me oh. see. Yeah, that's all it has. It doesn't have IGTV. Oh, how weird. And what's the um and what's the web address that you're at? Is it Instagram.com slash infinite levy energy slash channel? Uh, let me look let me look again. Uh, yeah, uh Instagram.com infinite love light eight energy slash channel. I don't want to sign it's not showing um that that um uh, IGTV. I'm just showing it just shows posts and it shows tag. That's probably what was throwing me off. I don't see IGTV at all on here. See everything else but that. Okay, let me I'm gonna give you now I'm like I'm tripping now. This is weird. Let me give you another Earl. Okay, try that one. I want to see what happens. Okay. It's the third one. Okay. Uh, the one that says, uh, okay, I'll try this one. Yeah, it's totally different. Okay. And it could be because. Oh, okay. This is, this might be it. It's a big tree. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I see it. It's this one that with the big tree and the cloud are showing. The clouds of the, on the background. Uh, uh, the, oh, okay. Yeah, this this got to be it. This one. Yeah. Oh. So that is the second to last video on my IGTV. Oh, video. yeah. I see that. Uh, I thought I was recording sideways because I was originally going to put this on YouTube. Yeah. But they recorded it up and down, so I put it on Instagram. Oh, well, I better say, okay, I'm going to keep this one. I'll save this one. Yeah, save yeah. that and watch Wait it. Wait that color on that cloud. It was like so pretty, that color. Yeah. That rainbow. It's the rainbow clouds. And then there's a lot of faces in the clouds, oh, especially wow. if you if fast forward to, um, fast forward it. Well, you have to look at it sideways. So okay. Kind of mess you up. Oh, did I have to look at it sideways? Okay, I'm looking at it. Let me see. Okay, I'm looking at it after my, my computer sideways. I, yeah, I have to see if I can edit this because it, it totally recorded oh, it. Really but like, fast forward to like three, three forty-five or whatever. Three forty-five. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me see. Trying to let me see. I mean, in this video, there's actually there's quite a bit of things to see, but there's one in particular. That's weird, though. I have to. I'm trying to fast forward and is that at one minute or something now? I probably gotta just gotta keep playing. I'm trying to fast forward it. Oh okay. Well maybe it's I usually don't have, have a problem with seeking it, but I can't do it now. I keep pausing. Oh wow. Definitely. Yeah, I'm looking. Oh yeah. Cause I turned, I got my video turned on. Uh, I got my uh, computer turned sideways. Oh wow, I see that face. Oh man, 
Même si le décès moi, il y a un pronostic aussi dans la tête, dans la cloud. Yeah. Oh, God, OK. When it, I'm trying to fast forward. I still can't fast. I'm just going to look at all of it. Yeah, it gets, see, like, yeah, watch all of it. Watch all of it later, but I wanted that. OK, I'll do. I'll watch all of it later. OK. Yeah. I'll uh, bookmark it. OK. Let me see. His bookmark. Yeah, yeah. That was okay. I'm back. Okay. 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 So, um, okay. Back to the film. Uh, but we were talking about, you know, just how surprising it is to feel I guess what we feel I mean I hear you know this is what it's like for me I just start talking about healing and I start tingling I just have to start talking about it and my hands will get all tingly my whole body will start to tingle because Ooh. I'm already like <laughs> it's this weird it doesn't even matter who I'm talking to about it but if I talk, if I start talking about it, I'll just be like, like, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and so I don't know exactly what it's like to feel what it is like for you on the other side, but I'm being told what's going on in your body. And I know that I'm tingling. I know that I'm activated. I know that I'm being told at times, like when I talk about like an astral, like when our, our wing area starts to tingle or, you know, and people are talking about that, that, and when I start feeling things that it's either that's my body or I'm being told, no, you're picking up on somebody else. Like a lot of times before we go into astral, like I'll feel a tightness in my chest. And that's not me, but somebody else is there that's maybe feeling a little anxious or whatever, and they kind of are tightening up, and we have to go through this whole like loosening up thing. And that's because I'm I'm really feeling it from, from somewhere from somebody. It really doesn't matter who. Um, when we're doing that, when I'm one on one with somebody, then I really know who's who, what's what. You know, mm -hmm. um, when I'm out in a crowd, it could be a little bit more difficult until I'm like, what's going on? Because a lot of my life, I didn't know that anything was going on. I just thought it was my effed up body. At the drop of a hat, I could go from feeling fantastic to feeling like utter and complete shit and being in complete pain and it blowing my whole life out of where I'm, what I was doing. And I had no idea that that was because I was connecting to other people and their energy and it was affecting me. I would get extraordinarily tired. I would be in a lot of pain. And if I was around a lot of people and this was happening layer on layer on layer, just imagine how messed up that felt mm -hmm. without me knowing that. Now, when I start feeling a certain way, I'm like, what's up? Who's around? What's going on? What's you did? You know what I mean? Like, I know something's going on or somebody's around or somebody's, you know, connecting to me um, psychically or psychically attacking me or something. I know. Um, my own bells and whistles goes off, my, my, the tribe starts going on, you know, like all sorts of stuff is, is coming into play. I mean, even if I'm distracted sometimes, you know, out in the world at a store doing my own thing and all of a sudden I start feeling stuff, like Rick has witnessed it. Like where I'm just doo -doo 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 -doo, and we've gone to a store and I'm just like, Oh, I can't stop yawning. I'm like, oh my God. He's like, what in the hell just happened to you? And I'm like, oh, I, I'm next to the bar because the bar is right. <laughs> There's a bar right, literally right next door to the Ace Hardware. Yeah. It happened to me multiple times where I've been right around there or standing there. And, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the bar. Yeah. It's the people I'm inside. You're feeling their energy. Exactly. It's that's why <laughs> it's, it's one or more people inside of that bar and that's where they go to get drunk and they're you know <laughs> oh god you can feel that energy that's a trip you know 
they're not going to be the healthiest, right? And right. Um, and they don't have a very strong life force. They're on right. Especially if they're got diseases. They're meat eaters. They're drinkers. Um, their body is like imagine their energetic body mm -hmm. is in quicksand, mm. and their nose and their mouth is like. Oh, golly. And here all of a sudden comes a gust of wind of air, and they're like, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. That's me. I'm the air. And they're trying so hard to pull on me, and they have no idea that they're doing this. Yeah, no look, that's, a, that's, that a, that's amazing. Like gasping for help because they're oh, so wow. energetically negatively charged that any kind of like higher vibe they're gonna pull off of. Mm. People do that in different ways, but a lot of times it's completely, you know, unconscious, subconscious, it's in, it's energy. And it's a trip that, 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 that okay, the energy knows that, that, that they don't even really, they don't even realize that, but that their energy knows that your energy is powerful, so they, 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 they try to get your help. Yeah. Oh wow, that is really <laughs> something that you connected like that. You multiply that by everybody. Yeah. Everybody. And and not knowing that that's happening. Right. You're basically this little rag doll getting thrown around because of the energy of the world at large. Um that takes a lot out of you. That's why you're tired sometimes and all that, because all those energies like that, that could exhaust you. Well, it, it collectively, now yeah. I know, like I'm feeling for the collective. Like when there's days where I'm like just super duper tired, it's like, well, whether it's a little bit of, you know, my own stuff or it's a lot of the collective, the all of Gaia, because I am a uh, an anchor and a trant and a um, grid master and a gatekeeper for Gaia, which means not only do I heal people individually, and not only do I you know do, do these different things, but I am connected to her energetic grid that's connected right. to everybody else. So I'm on a constant like helping like filter, like a filter basically. That's why you're able to help me with my healing. Um, yeah, you know. Yeah, and so you know. It, I being aware is like the whole pie, you know. The awareness is key. Mm -hmm. It's the ignorance that goes along with not knowing what is happening in your body for every single one of us. Some of us, it's a lot more detrimental to our quality of life when we're not in the know. It can really f us up, like you know, case in point, because I'm so in balance with everybody else in the world at large because I had no idea what was going on. Plus, I'm a target for shit. On top of that, they want this to happen, so I can't be, you know, doing my thing. Now, I mean, I I get affected, of course, but it rarely takes me down. You know what I mean? Like I might have a few days here and there where I'm a little tired, like I need a nap. I'm a little tired, but for the most part, I am so full of energy and so go, 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 go. And it's hard to, it's, you know, like my existence from 10, 15 years and like ago in my whole life, in the past where I could barely get out of bed, I take a shower, wash my own hair, go to the grocery store, move around. I had five different specialists and was on a regimen of 10 different medications. And that was my existence. And, and so I've been in bed enough, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So it's got to be like, you know, my tribe is really telling me like, you really need to lay down and go to sleep because this is what you need to do right now. And then I'm like, oh, okay. Like, because otherwise I fight that because I've had enough of being in bed in my life. You know, I just want to 
I have a lot to do. I feel fantastic. You know, like yeah. I went from feeling like shit my entire life, one way or another, whether it was just being exhausted from the energies and the world around me and the people around me, especially if they were low vibe um, people and a lot of them are and I didn't know any better. Not that, you know, I didn't have my own low vibe shit going on too, because I did trust me. But the 180 difference is really astounding in my own life. And this is why, you know, I know not everybody's a psychic, physical empath and not everybody's an incarnated or angelic, but I do know that everybody has the power to um, control their own energy and to get in touch with their own soul and 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 heal themselves and feel way better than they than they think they can and continue to and I know for a fact that if you continue on that path and continue getting healings when you need them and um and take care of yourself as you're guided to that not only do you slow down the aging process but it you stop the aging process and you reverse the aging process and I have no doubt that it, barring catastrophes that the people that I work with and help and heal that stay on that path are going to live way longer than they ever thought that they would because your body won't decay the normal way that normal people does because your body is activated in a light frequency that it truly is crystalline and we're all you know change that is happening that's why our bodies can feel the way that they do at time and at times and it is can be very uncomfortable our eyesight can get really weird or we can get dizzy and we don't feel like eating or sometimes this hurts or that uh, whatever and that's just you know our bodies are really evolving like we're the first true humans on the planet to go through a physical evolution and people need to understand that and i'm one of the people here to help people through that um and during and through that process you change physically into a much more efficient machine that your little light gets to live in and and be super healthy i know you said not only is your energy your disposition but your physicality is different than it was before right yeah yeah and 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 you and that's something that doesn't just like evaporate the day after the healing right it continues like yeah because i lost a whole lot of weight and i you know um like and i didn't really start losing the weight, weight until I, I talked to, i'm sorry huh how much weight did you lose you never told me oh i don't even know i don't even know i just know i lost like to go by the way my clothes fit and how my and how i look differently you yeah, know you because i couldn't get if i'm able to now wear clothes that i couldn't even wear before yeah, I couldn't even just hang it up in the closet. I can't even wear them, and now stuff just hangs off of me. That's awesome. And that's because I have a different way of, of thinking. Uh, my mindset is different. Everything's different because I got connected with you. I'm, well, like, um, well, you know, I have a different way of thinking about stuff. A lot of us hold on to extra fat and water in our bodies. Um, because of the energy that's in our body and our physical mm -hmm. body is trying to balance out that negative energy. So it's adding fat and water. Oh, okay. So, you know what I'm saying? And so once you, once you squeeze out that negative energy, there's no reason for the extra weight. And that's why I tell people not only is the anti-aging thing a, and that's just a side effect. But so is the weight loss. Like people will come mm -hmm. to me specifically, like I want to eat better or I, I want to lose weight. But even if you don't, 
like specifically, I want to lose weight, you're gonna lose weight because the weight has no reason to be there. Um, period. Like my, like me, like, I don't really know what I weigh right now, but I think it's right around 110 or 12 or 15 or something like that. And most of my life, it was more around 150 or 60. Mm. And that's a big, 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 big difference. I mean, yeah, I was for the most part a meat eater. I didn't eat poultry at all after mm. I had my son. Um, but, uh, you know, just, you know, the average person business kind of thing um but that's a lot of weight that honestly in my adult life like I never thought I would, like this is my natural body this like little thing <laughs> and it's like I never ever ever would have thought that for myself my entire life you know like maybe I was a child but I literally am like child size <laughs> <laughs> and that's because like my body is just like trimmed down like I even have like can you see my muscles I can see <laughs> I'm wearing white but like I and I don't even like really work out it's just like the natural state of having a really high like a, a body that's optimally working i guess you can say you don't need the weight it doesn't need to protect you your muscles start to really get in in shape regardless regardless of your physical activity your actual muscles will get stronger you don't really need to work out i'm not saying that you shouldn't but what I'm saying is, is that as your body does this continual transformation, it does things that most people would think is impossible, but it's not. And until you feel it for yourself, you're like, how is that even possible? Cause yeah. I know, cause I know for you, we talked about all this. We, I told you, I said, you're going to lose weight. You're gonna, you're gonna feel different. You're probably, you know, there's gonna be a lot of different changes going on within your, your you. You're gonna have to kind of get used to that whole new person, and it takes a few weeks or whatever to feel into that because it's not like, oh, I had my feeling on Sunday, and you know that was Sunday. It's like no, that continues to, to do its thing because. We really have, once again, I'll reiterate it, we really have gotten rid of a lot of energy. That's why, like, when we're in the astral or when we're in the healings and you can see that, like, bright light, happen, yeah. it gets really bright. Like, your eyes are closed and it could be really dark in your room and all of a sudden just, like, flashes of light are mm -hmm. going off. And that's literally the energy leaving your body and just lighting up, you know? You can't, you can only, you can see it with your eyes closed because you're, you're feeling the energy and your, your eyes are picking up on that. Um, if your eyes were open, you probably wouldn't see it, oddly enough. But what you do with your eyes closed, you know, same thing as when you're in your astral, but that's because, and when you're all charged and you're getting all like, that's what's happening. That's what's really happening. The only thing that we want to fortify at the end is just an extra layer of protection because now you kind of have a, yo, I'm over here. Yo, infinity's been here. Yo, you know what I mean? Like everybody's like, what's happening there? The dark energies, you know what I mean? And, and so it's just to kind of cap it off and cut, cut the like awareness as much as possible to the, to the universe that that you're on your way to healing because as we've said they don't want you to be healed they don't want you to no be they don't right. want that they don't even want us to get together on for you know to talk right that's why all that stuff was happening before with the camera you not find the camera and all that negative forces didn't want this hit this 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 um post healing i mean this post interview thing even even doing your healings have right. been challenging. 
I mean, think back to when we, when we, we had to reschedule it like twice because of stuff yeah. going on in my environment. It got like all of a sudden we have, we set you up for a healing and they're construction right outside right. my doors or somebody moving right. in or, you know, we had to switch it because I don't even know, like it took effort to get us to that first healing and then it's taken you know a few months later to get to that second healing and then right. we were supposed to talk about this yesterday and now we're taking it to another you know what i mean it's just but i am relentless like nothing is gonna stop me like it's like it may it may slow me down i may be late we may have to postpone <laughs> i'm almost it's like I forget to expect it because I don't like to anticipate that sort of thing. But at the same time, when it's happening, I'm like, of course this is happening. Cause I'm trying to do some fucking work here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I just, I'm like, of course this is happening. And I try, and I just, you know, have to go with the flow and, you know, do get, you know, we just have to be relentless about it. And that's yeah. how you have to be, that's how you have to be after a healing. That's how you have to be every day. Be relentless about yourself. Like right. we were talking about before when you're like, you know, I used to be, feel guilty and feel ashamed that I was taking care of me instead of my family members. But now, no, right. <laughs> no, because you, you can feel inside of you that, that that's really like you, you are your number one. Yeah, you may have people that you love dearly, your children, your parents, your animals. But unless there's like extenuating circumstances, you are your you. And you're ultimately responsible for what is going on, you know, and how you're feeling and, and what you're going to do and what you're not going to do. And I tell, I would tell people, cause I figured this out a long time ago. Cause even for myself, I would be like, a lot of times we call it procrastination and it could be for to do things that are good for us, but it could also be to do things that we don't, we just don't want to do. Mm -hmm. Because we as humans, we, we, we typically want to do things that we enjoy and right. Right. We don't do things we don't want to do because we don't enjoy it on some level, so we avoid it and other things, you know, to be. Yeah. Especially if it involves doing stuff for other people or, you know, certain responsibilities or people not following through with what they say they're going to do for you. And my thing is I figured out a long time ago, it's like, well, you're not doing it because you don't want to do it. It's pretty simple. You're not doing it because on some level, you don't want to do it. If you wanted to do it, you'd be doing it. Right. <laughs> Something is holding you back from doing whatever, you know, whatever it is, whatever it is. Um, and, and sometimes people are like that about their own, you know, personal circumstances and, you know, they don't change certain things because it, literally it's too much work. It would take right. you know, too much work and too much change and too much of the unknown and too much of the fear of not the unknown. And is it really going to be better? And is it really worth it? And aren't things good enough now? And I feel healthy enough and da da da, you know, whatever <laughs> until the end of time. Um, or, or you step up and you say, no, enough is enough. And I'm going to, I'm going to do me on such a level that I'm not even going to recognize who I am in six months because I'm taking this so seriously. And it doesn't matter what anybody else says or thinks about it. I have to do what feels right for me because when I don't, I really feel it. And that's when that's kind of the turning point for people is when there really isn't a choice in the matter. Like I can't live any other way. It's just, this is it. Um, and sometimes there's a little bit of the ins and outs and the wishy-washiness and then filtering out things from our life. You know, it'd be way too shocking to cut it all out at once, wouldn't it? I think like, like I tell people who eat meat every day or for most meals of their day, because a lot of people do, they'll have like sausage and bacon for breakfast or a sausage sandwich or some kind of like 
you know, meat thing in the morning, and then for lunch they'll have a burger, and then for dinner they'll have a chicken pasta, or you know what I mean? This meat, meat, mm -hmm. meat. Next day, meat, meat, meat. Next day, meat, meat, meat. And this right. is how a lot of people live their lives. And I was one of them. Maybe not every I single meal. I would, too. Yeah, maybe not every single meal, but most of them. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. every so often, I would be like, oh, I don't need meat in that. But for the most part, I ate meat. It tastes good. <laughs> and, and you know, I didn't eat poultry, but I ate other stuff. And, um... So I tell people, don't just, you know, when people go, yeah, I'm going to stop eating meat. I'm like, well, how are you doing that? Well, I'm just going to stop. And I'm like, oh no, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't just stop. Especially if you eat meat three times a day, your body, you and your body will not be happy about that at all. Right. And you won't be able to sustain it because your cravings will be just sky. You'll be like burger, pizza, chicken. <laughs> you have to do it like, okay, cut out like three meals and a couple days and like pull out, like I'm not going to eat meat for lunch. I'm not going to eat meat for dinner. I'm not going to eat meat for breakfast. And then slowly your body is going to feel lighter. You're going to feel better. Your body's going to say, I don't want the meat anymore. And, and pretty soon you get to a point where you're like, yeah, when I eat meat, I feel like shit. So guess what? Guess I'm not eating meat anymore. And it's just kind of evolves into itself because that's what it was meant to be. Um, it's when we force things in it in a really hard way upon ourselves that, that we resist. It's more about acknowledgement and love and tenderness and understanding and, and patience and allowing the self to, to evolve in a, in a steady but way um, that isn't too jarring. We never want to do anything, you know, unless somebody's really like really badly possessed in a way, you know what I mean? Then I have to get a little rough, but for the most part, we're talking about, um, gentle healing <laughs> to the body because we want the body to feel good and to heal. So anyway, right. um, so is there anything else that you would like to say in regards to your healings during, after, now? Um, we're obviously going to be posting this video on <laughs> line so people, so people can see and you know you can share your experience just like you know because I call you guys pioneers you guys are really pioneers you're doing something that as far as I know other people aren't doing and mm -hmm. that's working with me and doing these types of healings and stuff and the only way for people to understand them is to hear the experiences of other people and um so that's why we do these things because i was guided that that was probably a good idea to do um for for the yeah. world to see not that you know i'm getting like like i put up um sky's post healing video like four months ago and it's only had like 40 views so it's not like i've seen i've seen um sky's um talk with you i mean i've seen that yeah but um yeah it's like um what so I, was... I know you were so i just want to acknowledge i know that you were apprehensive i know that you were feeling a bit shy about doing this and getting on camera but I really appreciate you doing it, and I know that. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'll be surprised I got on Zoom for the healing, but it had to be done. Thank you um, for appreciating. I, it had to be done because I, I could have been stay. I could have stayed in the mindset. Um, although you know, my mother, I revert back to a lot of her teachings, but it's a lot of things that you um, helped me with, and are saying that um, I, that I didn't get from her. Um, you know. It's like I said, you're like a t continuation there. I let life happen in the past, but I needed that help. I could have stayed in the mindset and been um, been a victim to all these illnesses and went to the doctors and believed everything that doctors, but I asked 
God um, to to get me with a, a a for real holistic person. And I usually, you know, if I really try, pray hard, I try, but pray hard, I usually get what I want. And I was connected with you. I don't know how I got connected with you, but you have helped me so much in the healing. And I needed this. Um, I needed to be connected with you because there's some so many things, everything that you said. And some a lot of the stuff I never heard before, and it's, it's helped. It's helping me in living my life. You know, with the healing, you picked up a lot of stuff, and the uh, with the angels, a guy, and everybody working through you. you you're helping me um, with the healings, and just help me live my life. I really appreciate it. I needed to do this, and you were talking about procrastination, and I procrastinated about a lot of stuff, but this is my life. And when it comes to eating meat, and when we did the first healing, I abruptly stopped, because you had said that before too. You said this time, you said before that nobody should really just automatically just stop doing anything, you know? Yeah. Like eating meat. I mean, it's, unless you're just like, nope, can't do it anymore, and that's what yeah. feels good, then great. Yeah. But when you force it, it's- Right, and that's what I did, you know? And I didn't eat it for a long time, but. Then I went back to it. And I remember you said, don't force And I forced it. And I did go back to eating uh, lamb and a little bit of um, um, beef. But now I got the, the um, meatless stuff. And I'm going to do like you suggest, just slowly get rid of it. But I don't, I don't eat chicken anymore. There's certain foods, certain meats that I don't even have a taste for anymore. That's and, I, and, I, and I think it's because of the healing and listening to you helped me a lot. Yeah, well, your body is just going to naturally not want that energy in it. And so when your body naturally doesn't want that energy in it, you're not going to crave that, that food anymore. Right. Um, and, and then you also have to recognize that eating any meat is, is low vibrational. And, right. um, you know, maybe even sometimes when you are craving it, you have to be like, no, I'm not doing, I'm not going to have that. Um, cause it could just be another trigger. You know what I mean? Like you just, right. I've heard that, I've heard that years ago, like back when Rastas was used to say, you know, I'm not a Rasta, but I, that was when I had my real long dreads and everything. And they was don't eat meat a lot of the rosters i heard that way back in the day but uh hearing it again from you is it's true you know it's yeah, just low yeah. vibration it's just all that energy and i didn't really you know the way you have uh, was putting it it just makes a lot of sense uh, you know this energies and stuff yeah, like you know, that. most people don't think about that most people don't ever think about the energy that's in the meat that you're you know, you want that protein, and what is protein? Protein is energy. So that's right. why people eat the meat. So you're eating that energy. But where is that energy coming from? From an animal who was raised to be slaughtered, raised to be murdered, to be food consumption. And they right. are they're very sentient. They're very, they know they know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And they're not oblivious. And that energy stays in them. They know, you know, they're separated a lot of times from their families, from their mothers. Yeah. Their, you know, they, they live very, 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 you know, tough. Yeah, lives. very messed up. Yeah, messed up logic. Yeah, and, and when you put it like that, you know, I was thinking too, because I we have our, 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 our furry uh, babies and animals that we love, and we know that they're intelligent and they have smart, but I was separating the two. I was separating that the animals that I eat feel the same way. You know, they get, they live in, um, like in farms or like in cages and all that stuff. And when I've been, you know, looking at it like that, that's, that's, that's the same thing. It's like, like Broxy and everybody that we love. We wouldn't want them to be, um, like I wouldn't want to be in a cage and anybody eat me, you know, and get separated and get raised just for somebody's yeah, yeah. food. Looking at it like that. When you see the energy of a dog or a cat that's scared or hurt, just right. it hurts. Yeah, right. I can feel it. What that does to their entire every they tense up, they're freaked out, it takes them a while to chill out. And imagine living that every single day. Yes, I wasn't thinking of like that. I wasn't thinking about the cows, the, the pigs, and everybody feels that. You know, yeah. they all feel that. I wasn't thinking of it like that but now that I'm thinking of it like that it really makes you not want it anymore well, at all know, to eat them it's it's and it's like you know 
it's one of those things that like, you just have to be aware, like when pe everybody that doesn't, that it stops or, or slows down and meets significantly all say the same thing. I feel lighter. And that's why, because meat is very heavy. And it's not just heavy because of the nature of flesh. It's heavy because of the heavy energy. I really, 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 really can taste it. And it happened to me when I went, holy shit, it's not just like, I don't even want meat because of all of that. It's like, I, it even happened to me with eggs. Like I've talked about, like I ordered, I went to this local, um, this is when I lived in Long Beach and there's this like donut shop, whatever, but they make like sandwiches, you know, like many of them do. Yeah. And I was craving, a, I, I'm a sandwich girl. I love sandwiches. And um, I, so I got this breakfast sandwich, this croissant and egg and tomato and avocado and, and um, cheese, whatever. Um, I still eat cheese. Uh, and I took one bite of this sandwich and it just tasted like, it tasted like sad and it tasted like dirt it tasted just like and I knew it was the egg because yeah. the egg had come from a regular chicken that's in this little box that's just pumping out eggs and pumped full of hormones and you know and you know the cheapest eggs like when you can buy like 50 eggs for two bucks like there's yeah. something not right yeah. there and so when you're eating that and that's what they buy at most rents restaurants unless you go to a really um progressive healthy restaurant where they're serving free range um farm style eggs and those are the eggs that I eat. I eat free range, not, you know, just not cage free because cage free, they're still in pens. They're not outside roaming around on the farm, you know, free range. Free range is different. I didn't know that. I didn't know that was a difference. Free yeah. range, cage free. There's a big difference between cage free and free range. Oh, so, okay. So regular is just, they're in the little pens, mm. which are literally, they can barely fit in them. Um, and they're wow. just pumping out eggs and at a rapid rate that isn't normal. Um, mm. they don't live very long. I don't think, um, they live way shorter lives than they should. Um, but you know, they're chickens, so they're easily replaceable. Um, and then there's the, the, the cage free eggs. And those mean that they're usually in a pen about maybe the size of this room. Uh, maybe eight by eight, something like that. And they're in a pen where they can walk around. So they're free range, but they're with like 40 other chickens. And they're in like a silo kind of thing where there's pen, 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 you know, like hundreds of them. And there's like lights and stuff, but they're not outside walking on the farm. That's what free, that's what free range is. Free range chickens are the ones that are literally just like, whoop, whoop, walking around the farm you know they got their little coops they're laying their eggs they're happy little chickens and if you crack open the different eggs you will see in the yolk like the the sad chicken eggs are barely yellow and the really good organic free range happy ass chickens from the farm are like bright orange yolks and they taste amazing and they're good for you there's nothing wrong with eating those eggs except for you know every egg is going to have cholesterol so you shouldn't eat like five a day but you know like for me that's like eggs is kind of a like when i want i'll just crave them and then i could go five ten days without craving any eggs i'll be like eggs nope eggs nope i am i haven't eaten a, eaten a long time in yeah wow. Like don't want them, but you know, there's times where yeah, like it, I'll make eggs, um, I'll make an egg burrito and, and put all sorts of stuff in it, and that that'll be great. You know, I love that. Yeah. But I'll only eat those kinds of eggs. I don't eat eggs out in the in the wild. <laughs> um, I don't eat eggs at restaurants unless they are free range organic eggs, which is rare that. That, you know, unless you go, like I said, unless you're already at a, a restaurant that's like that, you know, a vegan restaurant, progressive restaurant, you know. Yeah. Um, but 
there's way other, there's many other ways to get protein into your diet. Um, there's, there's vegetables and, and fruits and grains and nuts. And that's what I, I graze on nuts all the time. Like a, a handful of pumpkin seeds has, I think like eight more grams of protein than a steak. Um, I heard about pumpkin seeds. I got some pumpkin yeah. seeds. They're so hard to eat. Every time I try to eat one, I end up breaking it. It all breaks to pieces. What do you mean? Like I have um, like some pumpkin seeds. And every time I, I crack open the shell, it's like the, 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 um, oh. the pumpkin seeds. You have to buy, let me show you how you buy them. You have to buy them like this. Oh, about the shell? Yeah, let me show you. Okay, that's what I was looking. Yeah, it, that makes sense to get them without the shell because they are hard to eat. And I got them from Whole Foods, the organic kind, but they are hard to eat like that. I can't even eat them. Yeah, go to like Sprouts or Whole Foods or something and get okay. the, get the raw. You, okay. you get that kind of shell. That makes sense. I'll do that then. Next yeah, time. so a handful of these is seriously like 20 grams of protein. Okay, and, I'll do that then. Yeah, they will fill you up and taste okay. So sometimes a lot of us that are, you know, calling, going through these like transitions right now, mm -hmm. we'll go through periods where we really don't have an appetite. I mean, don't you have that problem? Right. Yeah, sometimes I don't even feel like eating. Yeah. You know, I don't have an appetite a lot Absolutely. of times. Absolutely. Because you're, yeah. cause it's, cause yeah. anything that you have to digest is you know work for the body and and stuff and you're just there's just so much going on physically yeah. energetically you know we're just there's more going on that we're really even me is totally aware of and for this reason we'll be hungry but we're like nothing sounds good or maybe like a couple pe like a like i'll have like a half an apple or a banana or um a piece of bread or, you know, some nuts or, you know, a, a, a bowl of granola, like the lightest, you know, the things that like are high packed in, in fiber and, and, and yeah. protein. And you, have mentioned, you have mentioned that before about not having an appetite and I always thought not having an appetite was, there was a problem with you. Something wrong. <laughs> I didn't know that your, your, your energy was changing, you're changing your energies and all that because I always thought like when I got, it was associated with something sick, being sick, you know, I didn't have an appetite. Mm -hmm. It's really natural. So, sorry. Oh, that's okay. It's really natural given what, you know, is going on physically and energetically. So we just have to, we have to have stuff around that, you know, really packs a punch in the energy department that's high vibe stuff. So as many um, fruits and vegetables that you can have, um, potatoes are great. Uh, there's just things that, anything that, usually it's it feels like to most people that I talk to and myself that it need that like the more simple it is, the more that we're, we're leaning into it. We're like, yeah, that sounds good. You know what I mean? Like the more simple a meal, the more simple way to get to go from being hungry to not hungry. Like how do I go from being hungry to not hungry? Because I know I need food, but I'm really not into food. Like how do I accomplish this? Well, so that's what I was. About. Yeah. So you have to go to like, okay, I'll have a smoothie. I'm going to have a smoothie. I'm going to eat, you know, something with a, if you like avocados, have like, have like a slice of bread with avocado. Um, do you still eat cheese or no? No, no. I used to eat cheese back in the day. I haven't eaten cheese in a while. I used to eat yeah. back when I was younger. Okay. I have no cheese lately. No, that's cool. That's totally cool. I, I like cheese, though. I got to find a good cheese, so. <laughs> yeah, I like cheese, and if I can, I'll get, like, organic cheese. And I don't eat it, like, I have it all the time because I will crave it, and I want it, and it's whatever it is. It's fine. I don't judge myself over, I mean, I, if I want a freaking Twinkie, I'm going to eat a Twinkie. It's, <laughs> have I wanted a Twinkie? No, but if I want one, if I want a slice of pie, I'm going to eat a slice of pie. If I want to, you know, like, I'm not, like, into depriving myself. I'm into, yeah. I, but 
I might buy a big ass brownie like this at the grocery store and it'll oh, take me. Hey, what the brownies? I love brownies. I love brownies. But it'll take me, but I won't eat it all in one sitting. Yeah, I used to do that kind of stuff. I would buy stuff like that and I would eat it all in one sitting. That's how um, I would, the emotional eating, that's how I gained yeah. a lot of food. I would take you, and now I could just buy, I'll, I could get something. And I'll just take my time with it. And I eat yeah. so much too. Yeah, enjoy it. Like, to me, I'll get a big-ass brownie, and it'll take me three days. I'll have, like, three right. bites during the day, and it'll last me two, three days. And, right. and because to satisfy that, like, oh, that brownie flavor and, you know, eating brownie and stuff, you don't eat need to eat 20 bites of it. You could have right. three and accomplish the same feeling inside that like comforting mm, brownie and then you know it not be like yeah. <laughs> lunch same thing with like a bag of chips you could be like ooh, bags of you know that sounds good and then you know we can tend to go mindless on stuff and especially if you have the whole bag or the whole box so a good yeah, idea well done Pull out a couple of handfuls, put it in a bowl, and just eat from that and put the rest of it away. Because if you look at the bag, it's not one serving. There's like you know, 10 servings to a bag. So, you know, we just aren't, you know, we got used to these ridiculous serving sizes and not yeah. thinking anything about it right. when you don't need to eat the volume of food that we were once accustomed to eating. Like I was thinking about that the other day. I was, holy shit. I go, I'm thinking about like the amount of food that I eat now compared to the amount of food that I used to eat. And still, I mean, back, you know, depending on when I'm looking, you know, maybe I, there was times that I weren't, I, I've never been like, oh, I'm upset. I'm going to eat. Mm hmm well, not never. I, I did when I got really, really big, like in the two hundred, like right around two hundred. I was really young, like way back when. I would eat because I was happy, sad, whatever. In, yeah, in, that's not there, like emotional. Yeah, it didn't matter. It was like, oh, it's an occasion. Like I, I was. <laughs> Yeah, it was the only thing that felt like good to me, you know. Like I, my body was jacked up most of my life, so it was like the only thing that felt good was eating. But. For the most part, after I got past that, it's more like if I didn't feel good or was upset or, you know, I didn't want to eat, it'd be like, the, I'm not like, oh, I'm upset. I'm going to go eat a bunch of food. That's not like. No, me either. I never was yeah. like that. And now it's just like, there's times where I, I, it's like food is more of a pain in the ass burden. Like, great. I got to eat. I'm hungry. Now, how am I going to figure what, like, what is that going to be now? And then I got to figure out what's, what's it going to be. That was, what sounds good. What am I going to actually eat? What's going to sustain me? And the stuff that I found is like the high protein pasta. You get the high protein pasta. Um, have you seen those? I haven't seen those, but I eat pasta, but the only pasta I've been eating lately has just been, I love those, um, those organic, it's organic. A, a koyos, I think it's called koyos or, or udon noodles. I've been eating that. I love those. I've been eating that. Isn't that Japanese udon noodles? Yeah, it's Japanese. I love those. I udon. Have, let, me, let me see if I have any of those pasta dishes. Let me see if I have any of those pasta dishes. I love that pasta. The Japanese the udon noodles. That's, um, that's so the only noodles getting that I've when I started getting all Miss Healthy, I was like, oh, I'm going to switch to wheat pasta because that's better than regular pasta. Mm -hmm. But it turns out I hate wheat pasta. Mm -hmm. I don't like the consistency. It ruins the whole pasta experience for me. And so I said, F it. I'm just going to eat regular pasta. And that's just going to be the way it is. Mm -hmm. But not too long ago, Barilla, the Barilla brand came mm -hmm. out. Yeah, they came out with a, a a protein pasta. So it has more the consistency of a regular pasta, but it has a ton of protein in it because it's a wheat pasta, but mm -hmm. it's kind of like a blend. I don't I'm not even sure, but it comes in a yellow box. And I, they have, I think I have I have seen that before. Yeah, and it's actually really good. Like mm -hmm. I, I don't feel about it the same way that I feel about regular wheat pasta. Like mm -hmm. I can't I really hate regular wheat pasta. 
So how do you how do you feel about like the udon noodles? That's that's made from heirloom wheat. Um, I haven't had those. That honestly, yeah, those are good. That's the only pasta that I found that I like. I mean, I could just eat them. I've been eating them, but I could just eat them by itself with some soy sauce. I'll just use. Use amino, um, uh, soy amino, but I'm gonna get this tamari stuff. I love yeah. those. I'm gonna get some because that sounds really good. I mean, I love Asian food. Yeah, I, I love, love Asian food. food. I love all that stuff. It's just, yeah, I do. So I should try that. But, but yeah, so, so figuring out the combination on what to eat, what's gonna feel good, what's, you know, what's gonna go in and come out okay. All right, that's um, what I'm trying to work on. <laughs> it's all, yeah. <laughs> We just have to kind of figure it out, and it and it will right. and it will change. But there are certain things that are definitely the go tos, like your nuts, your your. Um, I like I buy the the blend of nuts and fruit, and um, like it has little pieces of like papaya and and yeah. pineapple and almonds yeah. and raisins. And just, like that. Yeah. Can I just can I just ask you a quick question? This is kind of going off the subject because I'm like you. I, I eat uh, um, certain foods and everything, and I'm not going to deprive myself and stress over. I shouldn't do this, but there are a lot of doctors here lately that say, uh, you know, that uh, that uh, I guess they connected to forces and they don't realize they connected to it. They say, no, you shouldn't eat certain fruits. You shouldn't eat certain vegetables because it has oxalates in it and all that kind of stuff. But you know, you just then and then say no. You shouldn't eat certain nuts because it has this and that. But I don't know. I don't. Sometimes I wonder because there's just a lot of a lot of doctors and people jumping on the bandwagon. Yeah, say, oh, there's a lot of misinformation. There's a lot. Hey, of people connected to negative stuff and they don't even realize they connected to it. They just say things. It's misinformation. True. And so the, the key to any kind of anything, especially when it comes to, you know, your diet is balance. Right. I remember you so, so, you know, if you're, I'm not, I would never say just have a diet of pumpkin seeds because that would not work. You know right. what I mean? Like you need, like have your fruits, have your vegetables, have your right. grains, eat, make your rices, have some beans. Beans are awesome. Make your stews, have a, you know, make your, make your, uh, I have a 10 grain pancake mix. Mm. It's super, you know, healthy for you instead of just Ooh, regular. Oh, that's pancakes. Oh, I think I should get that. I like pancakes too. Yeah. It's called 10 grain pancake mix. I get where it. You, at, where did you get it from? Well, I got it at, um, the grocery, my favorite grocery store is called Winco. It's wow. a, it's an employee owned, um, yeah. um, and then they, they have this whole bulk section with like barrels. Like I get barrel, I, there's like a barrel of these dark chocolate raisins that I get like a bag, like a huge bag. And I like, so there's certain things that I buy like that if I can, because yeah. it's cheaper and, and you can really control, you know, what you get. But, um, so there's lots of things that they, that you can eat that's going to satisfy that hunger and taste good and be good for you. It's just, you know, figuring it out and going right. in those, in those directions, you know, cutting the meat out, um, because people, yeah, usually exactly. like, people yeah. usually like build their meal around the meat. Like the, the stuff on the yeah. side is just the, the <laughs> I used to do that. I always felt like you can't get protein. You have to have some meat, but now, uh, I know that, you know, I'll get those pumpkin seeds, but out the seeds that have a lot of protein, I'll get that, you know, being in that. And beans, you know, I don't have to get meat anymore. Yeah, beans are great. Also, you can get a mi you can make a mixed bean stew. You can get vegetarian um, refried beans and make a and make do like refried beans and tomatoes and bell peppers and avocado and make like a, a vegetarian fajita burrito if you want with some rice. Even you know, I mean, you can just really. And Google, Google recipes, Google vegan and, and vegetarian recipes and just get ideas. This is what I did. I went, well, fuck, if I'm not going to eat meat, how am I going to eat? Like, I literally had no idea because for me, it came on really suddenly. I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to really cut out meat. And within a few weeks, I could not eat meat anymore. It was like really fast. And I was like, well, I don't even know what to make. Like, really, honestly. Um, so I had to like 
go online and look up recipes and just be like, what am I going to make? And I went to the farmer's market is a great place to start going to getting your, especially this time of year. Farmer's market is great to get new vegetables and really experiment. You go to the farmer's market, you're like, what is this funky thing? And then you ask the farmer, like, you know, it's some funky squash thing. And you're like, what does it taste like? And if it sounds good, take it home. Yeah. Google, Google what it is, find a recipe that, that looks good. That's a vegetarian recipe and make it, you know what I mean? That's the only way you're going to expand your horizons when it comes to not eating meat. But yeah. if you're still like, for me, I'm like, all right, I like it savory. I like it comforting. I like it to taste good. Yeah. I don't like any of that foo foo bullshit food. Like if I'm going to eat, I'm going to, you know what I mean? Like I was like, I've been a cook my whole life, Like I like to cook. So I had to figure out how to make meals that were, that checked all the boxes, but without the meat. And yeah, I, gotta try to I, say, I never trying to cook ever. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, you would eat real regular food. I don't even, I've never been a cook ever in my whole life. My mother used to know how to cook. My sister could cook, but I've never been a cook ever. No. So, so you're, so the easier, the better for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not to say that you can't do it. You just haven't done it. Right. You know, because you've been used to eating a certain way that really is kind of like hands off or whatever, you know, like you just, right? Like if you're not cooking, you're eating prepared meals or you're putting yeah. stuff together that's, that's like, is, yeah. But, yeah. but I'm not, since, um, since I have a certain amount of money now, I got to buy stuff that's convenient that will, you know, that I can get that'll last me. So I don't have to keep going to the store, but you gave me some, just listen to you, you gave me some good ideas. Maybe I should just uh, get stuff in bulk. It'll last me longer. If I do yeah, that. bulk is great. Like if I can, if I get the bulk beans, the bulk, well, I'm not, I, I don't buy the bulk pasta because I don't like it. So I buy that other pasta, but, um, but the, the beans, the raisins, the nuts, um the flour for like the pancakes if you can find a place that's around your home someplace where they sell bulk like sprouts are whole foods though i could probably get stuff in bulk i know i've been in whole foods before they have a lot of bulk stuff probably go there yes they do they have a lot of bulk stuff i've been getting on um, instacart lately but i should go to the store that way i can get like you said be in control of my own groceries and i can um take advantage of the bulk stuff that they have there yeah yeah, yeah, try that and just if you don't have much of an appetite, just eat what sounds good. You know, don't starve yourself. Cause I mean, I do the same thing. I'll be like, I'm hungry, but nothing sounds good. And so I'll just keep going about my business and kind of satisfy myself here and there. I'll eat granola bars, I'll I'll just, you know, I'll have stuff around where I can easily eat. Um and sometimes it's just that one meal a day, but it packs a punch. And the rest of the time I'm grazing on like fruit. And, and, and by, but by you eating like that, by you doing that, since you're, uh, you, you don't feel um, weak or anything, do you, you don't feel weak or anything, do you? you just, Only oh. if like I've gone all day without eating. Okay. You know, like if I woke up, barely ate anything, maybe had some coffee and then maybe had a bite or two of a granola bar and it's six o'clock at night and I'm like, I literally didn't eat all day. And it's not because I didn't want to, it's because every time I circled around to do it, nothing was sounding good. I just, yeah. eh, you know, and it just is what it is. But for the most part, um, yeah, no, I don't. I don't feel we I don't feel weak or anything like that. Okay. Um oh and there's another thing I was talking about yesterday was the it's the almond breeze banana almond milk. Do you like almond milk? Um yeah, I used to get almond breeze um every once um back in the day I used to get almond breeze. I used to go to food line and get it. Yeah, I like almond milk. Because they have this new one now with bananas in it. So it's. So I didn't know they had banana. Of the you new like bananas? One. They probably have it at, uh, it's probably at Whole Foods or Food Line. They probably have that. I haven't been to, no. Oh, okay, cool. Do you like bananas? Yeah. Yeah. I like, I, 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 yeah, I like bananas. Yeah, bananas are like, I try to have bananas around all the time because there's a lot of the time where I'm like, nothing sounds good, nothing sounds good, nothing sounds good. And I'll see mm -hmm. a banana, I'm like, ooh, I'll eat that. Mm -hmm. Because. Right. 
it really gives you a lot of energy and, and it's got potassium and fiber and all, it yeah. has a lot of protein in it and it's really good for you. So I like to have bananas around, but I saw this, let me show you. When I was pregnant with my son, the doctor told me to eat a lot of bananas, eat bananas. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Yeah, I see that. Oh, okay. Wow. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna have to get that then. Cause my yeah, son it, like, it's so made with real. It's that. made with um, banana peel. So it says, um, free of dairy, soy, blah 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 blah. Um, made with banana oh, pure. Cool. Made with banana puree, and it's nice and thick. Mm -hmm. Um, so you can just drink it by itself if you're, and it does really pack a punch because if, because there's times I'm like, I'm hungry, God, and then I start to get like my stomach hurts. I'm getting like, I'm lightheaded. Like I really need to eat. I'm still like, what am I going to eat? And I'll just pour a big fat glass of this and just chug it. And immediately I feel better. Um, it, next week will be my, put my, I think next week I'll get some groceries. I think I'm looking at the cow. I think it's week after. Yeah. Next week I'll get some groceries. So. Yeah, I'm gonna get that. <laughs> yeah, try it's uh, yeah, it's almond breeze blue. It's blue diamond almond breeze. So yeah, mm -hmm. I, I highly recommend it. Really good. I'm gonna get that. Okay, lady. Well, I guess that's it. Unless there's any, unless there's anything else that you wanted to say or whatever, or go over. We've been talking for forever. Oh my gosh. Sorry. How long has it been? Um, a bit of, no, I just want to say thank you. Uh, you've really helped me a lot with the healings and just talking to you really helped me a lot with, with a lot of stuff. I think differently now with thinking about me, um, not eating the meat and everything. It's just, I feel lighter. My mindset, just being connected with you has really it's helped me a lot in my life. Thank you. Uh -huh. Oh, um, well, you're glad that I met you. <laughs> well, I'm glad I met you too, honey. And I, you know what? I am so, I am so grateful for the opportunity to, to help you and to be in your life. And yeah, you, know, you really don't have to not really. I, I feel your love and your support in my life too. And I'm, I am grateful for you. And I'm grateful for this experience that we get to share together. And I yeah. think, I thank you for being a, a pioneer and cool. um, <laughs> for following your guides and listening and being open and, you know, doing all of this that, you know, can be out of your comfort zone. But, um, but I know that, you know, that all of it from, you know, your own perspective and out, it's like so important. And, um, <clears throat> So yeah, so I just, I, I've always been, um, I was, I should say, just so compelled, be, you know, to, to do the healing with you because you were so like, I need this. I know this will make me feel better. I know this will help. And I'm like, yes, you're the kind of person that I, you know, that, that is meant for what I do because you're ready for it you know you're open to it you get it you see beyond just what's in front of you and you're more into being open into what you can feel because you know that's also real and um the more people that become aware of that sort of thing and you're an example of that, you know, it's not just me standing there going, yeah, this is this, you know, it's always helpful when there's the other side of it. Um, it's not just take my, that's why I'm not ever concerned with convincing people because I'm like, you know what, you don't have to take my word for it. It's not, you know what I mean? In your, um, in your, in your story also, you know, you're not, it's just the, the I mean, the, it's just proof that, that you for real, because, I'm not the one that'll say, you know, I don't, I don't lie. And I'm not, it's, it's, I could feel the energy and I could feel you, your, your presence and everything and the other spirits and everything and Gaia. So that's why I know it's real. Plus I asked for this. I asked for a real on, I asked for a real person, real holistic person on a level, like what I know, what I believe. 
Mm-hmm. Cause I don't want no bullshit. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I don't want no bullshit. I don't want nobody on a clinical level or a book level. You're just so everything's so real. It feels real. Yeah, there's definitely you know there's definitely no mm-hmm. nonsense, no bullshit kind of you know way to to me and um you know none of us got time for that shit. We got to just be real, you know, and and we've got things to do. It's important and. <laughs> Yeah, it was a lot of stuff that you said that a lot of people that are not that have a certain belief system they say, "Oh, that's stuff that she's seen in a movie or she read in a book," or they wouldn't believe it because you said so far all stuff, but that stuff is so real. That stuff was real. Everything that you said and do is so real. Yeah, you know? yeah, and you know what? It's meant it. You know, as it hits people and as they're they're meant to absorb it. And like I say, I throw the seeds and whatever sticks and grows. Right. And if it circles back to me, if it circles back to me, awesome. You know, like I'm not, I wish I could just take over and heal the entire world and get in everybody's face and make them understand. Like truly, I wish. Yeah, but like you said, it's a spiritual war. And like I always, I always said too, like it's a cold, I mean, where where it's a balance. I mean, it's like, it's some, it's, it's some that believe and some that know the truth, but some that don't. We coexisting with each other. And some people on the other side, they just don't. Like my sister, Fist, is she just, she's a different level, you know? And I want to, you know, me and her are two different people. We're sisters, but we're two different people, you know? <laughs> yeah, and a lot of people just, they're just nothing that I can't see or touch or whatever, and none of that psychic stuff, and none of it's all totally fake and yeah and that's stuff that's believe it are crazy and that's you know that's they can think that yeah, thank you. <laughs> you know they can they can convince people can convince themselves of anything if they don't right. know, if they don't want right. to yeah, see and right. this is why i say you can't just be open to validating what you already know yeah. that's not being open being open is being open to the truth regardless of how it makes you feel. That's yeah. what being open is. And mm-hmm. sometimes you'd be like, oh, that shit is real. Even if you're like, I wish that wasn't real. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, it doesn't, you know, yeah, but it still doesn't make it, you know, false or fake. Right. And, um, and so a lot of, but a lot of people are kind of like that. I know this, and if you're outside of that, then that's not a real thing. Right. Um, and okay, <laughs> all right. Uh, I I I wish I could wave a magic wand and and kind of pull the the film off of people so they can see for real. <sighs> But again, it's not up to me. Right. I, it, has to be a, it has to be a balance. It's like you said, like a spiritual war. I think it got to be a balance. You can't, everybody ain't meant to see the truth. You know, we, we have to call yeah, it. And, and it's, not not a, it. it's just kind of like everybody in their own time. You know, maybe today right. for somebody, the answer is hell no. And then, but maybe in six months they're like well maybe you know because maybe their experience changed maybe they came across some other information maybe they heard about it in another way maybe yeah what i mean and it's just we all just need to drop our little seeds and what i call like you know knowledge bombs i drop my little knowledge bombs and then i walk away and then you deal with the fallout because it was meant for you (laughs) and whatever you're gonna do with it that's for you and I can't be attached to all of it because I have my own life to lead. And right. I, I, I sent out, I asked for it too. I prayed to, I said, I'm ready for my spirit tribe, the people, the, the, my soul family, my soul family that are incarnate, that are meant to come to me, that are meant to be healed by me, that are meant to hear my voice, that are meant to be in my life and vice versa. Cause as I heal you, I heal myself. And, um, and you know, you guys started showing up. (laughs) That's all I can say. I didn't know at the time that was before all the, the astral started. I didn't, you know, I wasn't, that was, I just was like, I'm ready. I'm ready for the next 
thing of what I'm supposed to do because yeah. I also was still figuring that out and not ready to come out to the world in any way because I didn't, yeah, I was just not time. And then it was time. And then it was time for people to find me. And now it's time for people, for more people to find me as they're supposed to. And it's time for me to do, you know, the balance of things like with my art, like a lot of us are supposed to do, whether it's to put out there to the world or it's just for ourselves or, you know, for our family members or for our own homes or whatever. Um, for me, I meant to, to reach a lot of people with that. And even that's been a, evolution i i always wanted that to be my life but i i never thought that that would be my life you know what i mean and now yeah. and now it's it's going to it is my life and 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 i have the balance of helping people of giving messages of healing like you know how great it felt yesterday to run into chris and and dakota and angel but they were driving out of the park and I was videotaping this guy or had just gotten done. I was like, Hey, and I used their washer and dryer. So I was asking mm -hmm. them if their washer and dryer was available. And Dakota just was just like not engaging. <laughs> he was just kind of like sitting there looking at me and Chris and I were talking and I was like, Hey, what's up with you? And Chris, he's like, oh, my back hurts. And Chris is like, yeah, something just all of a sudden happened with his back yesterday. He's been, he starts talking about that. And he's like, it's really painful. And it came on suddenly. He's like, I don't even know what I did. He's like, I just, he's like, it's really weird. And I was like, and immediately I knew it was his root chakra. And I knew that he needed to just, a lot of energy was being, is coming up to be released right now. Yeah. And to be able to relieve him of that pain, to be able to, you know, put my hands on him because he's here in person, whatever, it's just easier coming on radio and put my hands on him and make the, the energy, you know, move and work with him and, and talk with him and his, and have him go, oh my God. Oh my God, I'm not in pain anymore. Oh my God, I can move around. Holy moly, that's like legit. Like he was just like, I can't believe this, right? And he got lightheaded a couple times. We had, cause he was standing up when I was doing it. I, we actually had to go get my table. We had to stop and get my table so he could lay down because he was releasing so much energy that he kept getting lightheaded. Mm -hmm. And um, when it's all said and done, he's in a completely different place. He's healing, he's transmuting energy, his back isn't in pain anymore. And to be able to be a part of that always makes me feel so good. Like I feel so lucky and so blessed to be able to, to do that for people that, yeah. that either are my friends or, or perfect strangers, you know, to, to be able to do what I do for the animals, for the, um, for anybody, you know, it's just, it feels like it's just such a gift. I feel so blessed and so lucky to be able to do that. And, um, and also for those of you who come to me for that, you know, who trust me, who believe, you know, like, Hey, I've got something wrong with me. Can you help me? And I'm like, yeah, you know, I can, I can. And, and I want to, I really, really do anytime. So I, you know, please, don't hesitate, you know, for yourself in the future. Don't suffer um, if anything is going on with you. And all I ask when it comes to other people that you may come across, that you're compelled to tell them about me. Yeah, because I told my son, I mean, I didn't mean to uh, uh, um, interrupt you, but yeah, I told my son about you again. And I guess whenever he's open, he'll talk to you again. He just yeah, and, and that's fine. And whether it's somebody that you meet at the grocery store that's complaining about their bad back or their hip or their, you know, whatever, their hip or their cancer or their, it doesn't really matter. And if you, you know, if it comes to you, like you should tell them about infinity, then tell them about me and then just let it go. Just be like, she's helped me. She helps people. She can work with you no matter where you are, check her out and then just let it, and then just, you know, what I tell people is just don't decide for somebody else how right. they're going to receive me and what I do. 
that's okay. all I that's all I ask because I have to do that for myself. When I meet people out in the street and they say to me, I have this or my son or my daughter or my this or my that. And I have, and even though I know there's a good chance that this person is going to go, you what? And, 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 and no, and you know, might say really nasty things to me because it happens. It just happened to me the other day. I said, oh, I can help you. I'm a healer. And then within 15 minutes, I'm getting insulted to my face about how I'm fake. But regardless, I do it anyway, because it's not about that. It's about, I have to put it out there. And what they do with it is their business. So what I ask people who already know me, don't decide for other people. You know, because I've had people go, oh, well, I would tell so-and-so about you, but they're pretty religious and they feel this way. And I don't think that they'd like that. And I'm like, okay, no, what we really got to call it is you're afraid they're going to judge you for what you believe in about me. I'm sorry, but that's what it is. You got to stand up for your own beliefs and go, I know this person and she's helped me and she can help you too, believe it or not. It's up to you. You have to kind of adopt that same, you know, energy that I have about it. Because if you're all like in judgment with yourself about the whole thing, then it's going to come off that way. No matter if you do say something, you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. uh, you know, so it's just, it's just a very matter of fact thing. And so again, that's all I ask is for people just don't decide for anybody else how they're going to react and receive me let them figure it out for themselves let them see how it unfolds for you after a while you know and you can circle back when they go what's going on with you, you go well i'm still working with that lady i told you about you know like i just do what you you know whatever and then they may go ah, okay you know maybe there's something to that maybe i should investigate it because a lot of people that i find they don't even get anywhere near close enough to me to even find out what I'm about. You know, they're already, you know, off. Um, so that's like the struggle that I, I have a lot of the time. Um, but it's still meant to be, you know, like, you know how many times I've been like, I would just love to just shut up about all of it and just let the world at large just fend for themselves because <laughs> most people don't want to hear me anyway. But no matter how badly I may have those thoughts, they're pretty much gone because I'm still responsible for being me, regardless of who's going to hear me. You know what I mean? So, so, so keep doing what you're doing, my love, and keep sharing the way you're sharing. And, you know, if your sister or whomever, did, you know, wants to pass judgment and call me a fraud and a whatever, that's fine. Um, did you ever tell her that, like, that I actually did your healing for free? Yeah, yeah I told her. She read my testimony also, and she still. You know, so she it's still, like she's taking her money. She's a fraud. It's like she. Yeah, yeah, she's, yeah, yeah she accuses me of, uh, yeah, she read my testimony and everything, and I told her to read your web, your, your, your website, I read your story, and she's still saying, oh, she's that woman's just taking your money. She's a fraud, you know? Exactly. How much of myself do I do for free? It's like, if I was that yeah, money centric. The you know, sister thinks I paid for everything and I'm, you know, so that's just, she just believe what she believes. That's yeah. Right. And, and that's the thing too, when people kind of come at me very like, oh, you're just in it for the money. I'm like, you're obviously very new because if you knew me at all, you'd know that that's not true. It's yeah, because I didn't pay for none of it. Everything it's I not true. You know, it's like, yeah, I need money, but I'm not all about the money. I'm right. not about the money. If anybody wants to give you anything, like if I give you anything, it's because it's my choice. And plus, you know, people, uh, people, um, financial situations, you don't even think and worry about that stuff. You're just all about helping people. That's what it is. It's all it's just for real. There's yeah. a lot of scammers out there. There's a lot of people. It's a lot of scammers because I know scammers. I ain't no hey, fool. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. You know what? I, and I, you know, I, I, I just know that the money thing will work itself out. You know what I mean? And yeah. on top of that, I, but at the same time, it's like, I'm not out just giving free healings to everybody either. 
Exactly. Um, because I recognized and I was told by not only my spirit tribe, but other people, you know, speaking for them, that people need to be accountable for their own healing. And in this, yeah. in this world we live in, that means money and they have to take it seriously. They have, they don't have hundreds of dollars sitting around, then they need to, to save money and they need to, right. to decide that this is a priority. And, and, um, but you know, with you, it was, you know, you'd been around all the time. And you were like, I can't wait to get a healing until I can afford it. And da, 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 da. And I was like, and I was just guided, you know, you just need to give her a healing regardless of the fact that she can pay for it right now or not. You just need to do it because it's going to also benefit other people when she tells her story about how she feels about her healing. And, and that's important. And so that's how that whole thing came to be. When I very first started healing, well, this is before I had like this whole regimen of what I do, you know, I was thinking like, oh, maybe like 50 bucks or, you know, it was like trying to make it so anybody and everybody could get it done. And that really wouldn't have mattered anyway. It's more, it, it really is. And I don't even charge that much. And, um, and, you know, like I said before, people charge hundreds of dollars more than I do. And that's just for talking and, and coaching. That's not for doing any kind of energy work or healing, you know? So I feel like I'm very reasonable. I give a lot of myself to my clients. and But I also match people. Um, I'm not going to do all the work. I'm going to match you in, in what you're willing to give. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not one of those people who I'm all about taking money and doing healings regardless of the outcome or what's going on or, or, you know, it's important to me that it's actual progressive work with a person. So for all of those reasons, that's why it was something to do with you. And look at you, look at how, how great things have been for, you know, yeah, come a long way, come a long way. Thanks to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, but you know, it's not just, it's, it's, it's you, you know what I mean? It's not just, it's not me. It's you. Me. It's, it's, yeah. Right. Yeah. It's you. I'm just shining a light and you're going, Oh wow. And you're walking into the light. That's all I'm doing is going, this is here. And you're, and you're like there and you're present and you're going for it and you're open to it. And that's you. Cause yes, I yes. do that all day long and people don't step up. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so that's I get connected with the right person for sure. Yeah. So we, we both got our, our prayers answered. Yeah. We did. <laughs> All right, honey. Well, I'm going to get going. Okay. I'm going to go find myself. I think the, my vegan pizza guy is up in the, in the hills tonight, today. At, we've got some festival going on at our lake. So I'm going to go oh, see okay. about that. And um, thank, you, thank you again for doing this with me. I really appreciate it. And um, please don't ever hesitate to reach out. And I oh, love you. Sure. I, I love you so, so much. I love you too. And Thanks. it's always so great to see your face. Great to see you too. All right, honey. I will see you. Hopefully, um, I will, I think tomorrow, the Easter, my Easter thing, um, will probably be around in sometime in the, like, maybe four o'clock hour okay. um, for tomorrow. So hopefully you can make it. Yeah. Okay. All right, honey. Mwah. You too. Bye-bye. Bye, honey. Have a great rest of your day. You too. Okay. Bye. Bye.